rundown time. Tonari was able to return to the island only to see Fushi out of his prison cell. <laughs> Ang reason ni Fushi kung bakit itinakasan niya sarili niya, well, he got bored in that hole. <laughs> so, uh, they were able to find some refuge in a, in a little cave down by the seashore. Then, on the uh, on the moment they uh, uh, they've they've already prepared to set out back to that boat, yung malaking barko. Here comes the beholder, alerting Fushi of the knockers. No choice, si Fushi kunde manatili sa islang yon. And to see what's um uh, on how on how the knockers are wreaking havoc right now. Lo and behold. The knockers have found a way to take over organic bodies, specifically humans. Patay man o buhay yan, basta tao, they can take it over. Maraming nadamay na bangkay. Kumuha lang sila sa pinaka libingan ng, ng island. Doon sila nagkukuha ng mga ano, uh, kaninang mga alagad. Uh, well, zombies. Okay, they become zombies. So, all the island, all the islanders that have that have been killed by these zombies turn into zombies themselves. Ina ina assimilate na ng mga knockers. Ooh, even Hayase is alarmed at this. Nakita niya mismo na mga mata niya. So, Fushi returns. So is Tonari, and so is the gang. So nagtulong tulong sila until. Upa, Mia, then Uroy. Si Alamis po, napatay na mga knocker. And, the knockers have assimilated their bodies. Fushi could not even euthanize Upa. Hindi niya magawa. Nag Nagparona pa naman siya. Final scene. What? Uroy dies. So, while, while, while saving... Uh, while saving the rest... He was able to save Fushi. He had Fushi turn into a mole. Tapos hinagi sa nanya kili guard yung uh, yung alaga ni Tona rin na kwago. The guard was able to save Fushi. Ayun. Inasimilin nas inasimilin nas sila Uroy at Mia ng mga knockers. Uroy and Mia are now officially dead. The knockers are now more terrifying than ever. Hindi na nila kailangan ngayon ng isang uh, na na kunin ang powers ni Fushi para makapaglaban. No! They just need a human body. Patay man yan o buhay. The knockers are scarier this time. So, let's break the episode down, guys, ARD style. Pace! First start of the episode, yeah? Nakataka si Fushi in his own OP way. <laughs> so, nag... Kumaga, nag... Uh, na what you call this reality check si nang dalawa ni Tonari so that's the first third of the episode then the um the, the latter two thirds of the episode yan it's tense na because it now involves the knockers they are now the biggest threat in this anime it's no longer um it's no longer high as naman it's the knockers this time talagang Wow! Have they evolved? They have now found a way to take over a human's body. Eee! Kahit buhay ka pala, pwede ka pa nilang, pwede, pwede ka pa nilang gawing zombie. <laughs> this, it was really disturbing. And the pacing will make you realize that. Na deduce na ng beholder. The knockers are coming from underground. So, Una na biktima sa barkada ni Laton ni Tonari si Upa. Po, pinu may may luwa pa sa parang tenta ka na ganun. Pinulupot yung isang paa niya. Then, ka sumaksak dun sa binti niya until it completely took her over. Kawawang Upa. Nakakaawa. Shoo. And if that wasn't disturbing enough, the knockers made Upa kill Mia. So siya naman, pero hindi uh, it took some time kasi tinakasin na yung tinakasin na si Mie. Then 
Well, when the time came for Fushi to euthanize Upa, he just couldn't do it. Until such time na yun. Siya na mismo inassimilate. But, he found a way. Nag, nag-march siya. So, I don't know kung bakit um, hindi natuloy pag-assimilate sa kanya ng knockers when he turned into March. So, he wasn't able to... They weren't successful. Then, um, the knockers found a way to assimilate Uroy's body naman. Pinutulan siya ng braso. Dun pumasok. Right before that, he was able to to save Fushi. Pumunta, yan, pinapupunta na sila lahat kagad dun sa, sa corpse pit. Kasi dun talaga nagagaling eh. Yun ang source ng power ng knockers ngayon. So, wow. At the expense of three of Tonari's friends, nagang, the knockers will now stop at nothing to kill Fushi. Flow naman. First gear ship is when Beholder alerts um, Fushi of the knockers. When it comes to the knockers, Fushi doesn't take it for granted. Talagang, they will stop at nothing to um, to kill Fushi and they'll now stop at nothing to achieve this. Even assimilate, uh, even assimilate humans. Why do they call this a gear shift? Simple. Here is where we see Fushi's sense of duty. Kailan man hindi niya pababayaan ang mga knockers sa mga tao. No. They are they are no match for this uh for this for this alien race. That's why he's keeping um, his inner circle to a minimum. Talagang ay na as much as possible ay na talagang may madami na ano eh na na kaibigan niya in this fight against the knockers. We talagang this gear ship uh, made us see Fushi's now more solid sense of duty. This one. Second gear ship is when he was trying to euthanize Upa. This gear ship also showed us Fushi's other weakness. He, he, he tried keeping, he tried telling him, he, he kept on telling himself that this is no longer Upa. Patay na si Upa. Knocker na ito. Ang knocker na ang nagpapagalaw sa, sa katawan niya. So, but in the end, he just couldn't do it. Until, yun, gave the knockers a chance to attack him. Fushi needs, oh, uh, this is my opinion. Fushi really needs to keep that, um, to keep that compassionate side of his in check. Kasi, nakaapata yan eh. You're on Jananda, Fushi. It's every man for himself. And the knockers are, well, I think the knockers are trying to make Jananda their home. Kaya, um, they found a way to, they found a way to, well, probably kill Fushi this way. Yan, kasi dami. If you look at it, Fushi is outnumbered here. It's a dami naman ng mga, ng mga bangkay doon sa corp speed na yun. Hindi maubusan ang knockers. Hindi sila maubusan. They have an endless, they have an endless supply of dead bodies to assimilate. Tapos, pwede pa silang pumatay ng mga buhay pa. Like, what they did with Upa, Mia, and Uroy. If I were Fushi, I would keep my, um, I would keep my compassionate side in check muna. Because, he's in no man's land right now. Yung dalawang pinakamatinding kalaban niya is on this island. Hayase and the knockers. That's why I call it a gear ship. Final gear ship is when, of course, um, the final scene. Wherein the knockers assimilate Uroy. Ang strongman ng tropa ni Tonari. He's no match for the knockers. The knockers have found a more disturbing way to kill Fushi. That is, get the, get the whole island of Jananda involved. Uh, if, uh, if you ask me, the knockers go right now is to assimilate the entire island. Wala silang pakilang kung sinong nandito. As long as they could kill Fushi this way. Uh, I, that's the way I see it. Through this gear ship. Yun naman talagang pakain ng mga knockers eh. Patayin si Fushi. So, 
they will evolve at any chance they get just to one up him they are one upping him right now and fushi is in a cowardly state right now hindi ba napansin mga ka lifestyle but anyway these three gear shifts that i saw will definitely play a role in the final two episodes of this anime let me put you up to speed mga ka lifestyle in case you haven't noticed we are in episode 18 tapos 19 tapos 20 the final three episodes of this anime's run so these three gear shifts they will definitely be a factor in at least in Fushi's decision making process in the final uh, in the final two episodes All right now uh, he doesn't know what to do he feels defeated kasi the knockers already outnumber him eh through, evolu through an evolutionary pro through some evolutionary process they uh, they went through and they and they're doing that just because they want to kill Fushi yun lang yun lang goal ng knockers kasi plot wise malinis the plot is so clean you can really feel the uh, the episode's disturbing nature talagang grabe as if I was watching High School of the Dead all over again. Parang ganito yun eh. Mga zombie. Wow. If this doesn't look like a zombie apocalypse to you, I don't know what is. The main protag is scared. And uh, one of the, one of the, the other big bad is also scared si Hayase. You can, you can, you can tell by the look on her face. Talagang nakaalarma na siya sa nangyayari. In time. The knockers would be would be dominating this island. She probably has zero chance of survival. The plot made me realize that. This episode has a really clean plot. Why? Because only a plot this clean will elicit those emotions from you as the viewer. And it will make you deep dive into it there's a lot to deep dive into uh, i've been I've, I've been deep diving into this episode since i since we're since we started breaking it down Maka lifestyle haven't you noticed <laughs> pace flow and plot they all came together for this episode it's episode 18 final three episodes na po talagang kapanapanabik ang to your eternity in this episode so to your eternity episode 18 isip pa ganda nga ng episode eh oh two thumbs up speaking of final three episodes hmm I don't know what I'm gonna do if to your eternity ends kayo mga kalaista what are you planning to do once this anime ends ako well First and foremost, I'm gonna keep reviewing the animes that remain. To Your Eternity will be ending early by at least four weeks. So go to first week of September, tapos ato. And there will come that time again wherein we have to say goodbye to uh, to to this roster, at least uh, the majority of it. And to your eternity is going to um, it's going to set that feeling off really early. So, tanong ko sa inyo mga ka lifestyle. What are you going to do the moment to your eternity ends? Comment below. Okay, let uh, let me see, let me see your thoughts on that. So next week, second to the final episode. Wow. Uh, I'm I'm gonna start missing this. Uh, I'm going to start missing this anime. Talagang, it's one of the best this year. So again, to your eternity, episode 18. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime, lifestyle. Next episode has been teasered. Oi! Mukhang... Mukhang... Mukhang sisingit pa si Hayase ah. But, I don't want to trust the rest of it. One thing is for sure about the teaser, 
Hayas' evil knows no bounds. And we still have the knockers to deal with. So what do we do mga ka-lifestyle? The drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Enjoy lang kayo ha? Enjoy. Rundown time. So, eto na. Dadali na ni Kazama, yung pangalan ng leader ng Free Speech Alliance, si Nauto, to a TV station pala. What they did here was a pure act of terrorism. Uh, just to air their grievances. And to show the entire world that uh, the supernatural exists. So, pagagamit niya rito yung power ni, ni Nauto. Okay. In, on national TV. That was the plan. Pero, nagkaroon bigla ng uh, vision si Nauya at nung pinako, pinakausap ni Kazama, yung mga kapatid, on live TV. So, talagang right there. The whole, uh, the whole of, at least the whole of Japan now knows that even psychics can become hostages. Sinabi ni Nauya, Kuya, tumakbo ka na. The SWE is also there. Merong espia sa Free Speech Alliance. And before he could say his name, boom! Binaril si Kasama ni Mike. Mike is the mole. SWE pala to. So, right there and then, on national TV, inilaglag niya ang Free Speech Alliance. Pero, according to what sa com- sa commanding officer ng magka- ng mga Kuroki, um, the Free Speech Alliance is not the real target, but the Kiriharas. So, taas ang agad si Nauto. The moment we've all been waiting for has happened. A Kuroki and a Kirihara went one-on-one. Sa kasong ito, yung dalawang panganay. Nagbatuhan ng kapangyarihan. What if? Pero may, may, medyo nakakatawa eh. Whatever um, Takuya throws at Nauto, Nauto throws it back twice over. Nagbato ng dalawang kotse si Takuya. Ang ginawa ni Nauto, pinigilan yung dalawang kotse at ginawa pa niyang isang wrecking ball. <laughs> Pinagganong-ganong niya psychically hanggang sa maging isang malaking malaking bola ng baka na gano'n at yun, binato, ibinalik niya kay Takuya. They battled inside a parking space when all is said and done. Wala! Wasak ang parking lot! Wasak na wasak! Final scene! At sa kalagit na ng laban nila, well, the, uh, the duel that is Takuya versus Nauto, suddenly, nawala si Nauto, but at the same time, nawala rin si Nauya, si Emily, yung uh, yung tumulong sa kanila na member ng Free Speech Alliance, pero uh, dumifect na sa mga Kirihara, and yung mother ni Masayuki, si Miki Tachibana, nawala silang lahat na parang bula. Good timing. Kasi, iaaresto na rin sila ni Layuya at ni Kimi. Wala na parang mula. Not even Yuya can sense their presence. Wala. At ito namang si Takuya, tanong ng tanong noon kay Nauto kung um, kung nasa na magulang nila, uh, pinagbibintangan sila ang mga kirihara na dumukot sa mga magulang nila and Nauto just said, What the hell are you talking about? Excuse me. <coughs> Let's now break it down ARD style. Pace. Umpisa pa lang ng episode. Tense na. But you really couldn't call it fast until um, that scene where, where um, the Free Speech Alliance was able to secure the TV station. Talagang hinostage nila yung newscaster, yung mga cameraman, pati yung resource person ng TV station, yung guest nila. Hostage sila ng lahat. Hostage din ang mga Kirihara, technically, because what? Well, Nauto is here against his will. His brother Nauya 
is being held against his will. Right? No. These are just terrorists. Mga talagang siguro sa umpisa pa lang, they do not give a shit about the Kiriharas. All the le- all Kazama cares about yung leader are their powers. He really wants to show the entire world, especially Japan, that the supernatural exists and psychics walk among us. But uh, his methods are uh, his methods are proven ineffective by the SWE. Hindi nagtapos ang episode dun. The battle we've all been waiting for has just happened. Ayun nga. Um, naglaban yung dalawang panganay. Si Nauto at si Takoya. Nag, uh, talaga nagtagi sa nakapangyarihan sila rito. But, um, you can say it was a deadlock. The way I see it, Nauto was just playing defense. Talagang ang sugod ng, ang bira ng bira rito si Takoya. The pacing will make you realize that. <laughs> Talagang, uh, you can't help it kasi nagbakbakan na yung mga yung dalawang angkan eh. Okay? Nagtagig sana ng kapangyarihan. But before that, a really tense moment because, well, the Free Speech Alliance has now has now just proven to everybody that they are a terrorist group. At dinamay pa nila ang mga kirihara. So, the pacing will also make you realize that. Conclusion, the pacing was really good. To tell you frankly, I did not expect the um, the battle between the Kurokis and the Kiriharas would come this early. Because it's episode 6. We're just ending the first half of, its, of this anime's run. I expect ko na uh, magkakasagupa pa ang dalawang angka na to in the second half. Pero mukhang napaaga. <laughs> But that's a real treat for uh, for anyone who's viewing this anime. Finally, action between psychics. Flow naman. First gear shift here was um was actually in the opening scene, not in the um not in the episode proper. That's, that's what, at least that's what I call it. The particularly the moment involving Simiki. Si yung nani ni Masayuki na dalag na teenager pa and of course si Shoko uh, sila kasi yung sila mag best friend eh meron ba na sinabi si Shoko kay Miki about Masayuki eh teenager pa lang si si Miki noon so nagtaka siya kung bakit ganito ang uh, bakit ganito yung sinabi sa kanya ni Shoko well something to this effect Shoko said that your child will... Here's my interpretation. Kasi, doon pinutol eh. Your child will... Probably will have... Uh, will have psychic powers of his own. Hindi naman exactly na sinabi ni... Ni Shoko yun. Naputol yung dialogue niya nung... nag to na si... Miki from unconsciousness. Kasi, uh, they were all held hostage by the Free Speech Alliance. Eh, hiniwalay pa siya... Hiniwalay pa siya kila kila kinauto, okay kinauya. Hiniwalay pa siya. So nilagay pa siya doon sa isang hiwalay na kwarto. So why do I call that a gear shift? Simple lang. It just goes to show you the ex- the extent of Shoko's powers. She made this prediction 27 years ago. Nung mga teenager nung teenager pa sila ni Miki. As high school, uh, they were still high school seniors at the time. I told you guys in the last review. <laughs> Shoko Futami is this anime's version of Nostradamus. If you would carefully watch this episode, everything that Shoko has predicted, well, so- somewhat so far, mukhang magkakatotoo eh. Sa takbo ng mga eksena, mukhang dumapupunt <laughs> This is what this gear shift made me realize. You get what I'm saying, mga lifestyle? Second gear shift. What? Nung, nung nagkaroon ulit ng vision si Naoya that, well, um, 
nilaglag na pala ang Free Speech Alliance ni Mike. But before he could say his name, ayun, binaril, si Ka- binaril ni Mike si Kazama. Na, nagpakilala na. Okay. Yeah. Tama, pre- yeah. tama prediction ng psychic na yan. Yes, I am the mole. Putang ina, SWE pala to eh. Kaya pala hindi siya naniniwala ng lubusan sa, sa mga pinag... Well, not of display this power in front of him, hindi pa rin siya naniniwala. Hindi pa rin siya naniniwala. Now ya, display this power, hindi pa rin siya naniniwala. At ito nakakatawa. Kasama told Mike to go to hell pagkabaril sa kanya. At sinabi pa ni Mike, hell doesn't exist. Ba't ka naniniwala dyan? Mukhang talagang lapdog ng SD, SW ito. So, this gear shift, no, mamaya na, mamaya na. Third gear shift and final one. This blinding light suddenly takes Takiriharas, Emily, and Miki Tachibana with it. We can all take a guess as to as to who as to who started that light. We can all take a guess. Right? Pero di, right? Don't you say sa inyo. Di ko sa inyo. <laughs> These three gear shifts. The way I see it will play a role in the second half of this anime's run. And based on these three gear shifts, we can safely say that, well, Shoko Futami will, will now throw her hat into this war. I can neither confirm nor deny the, um, the one that, the one that uh, brought that light over to, to take the Kiriharas and their, uh, and their sympathizers with them. With them. Igawain din ng SWE yan eh. O di gawain ko rin. <laughs> but seriously, the first two gear shifts will... Uh, I am 70% correct that it will play a role in the second half of this of this run. Kasi, nag, basically, 27 years ago, sinabi na ni Shoko kay Miki na ang Una niyang ipapanganak na anak, magkakaroon ng psychic powers yun. And well, yeah, she's sort of correct. Kasi dun, dun din papunta yung, yung line of conversation niya. Dun na rin papunta yung sasabihin niya. If you, could, uh, if you could deep dive into it. Well, this is a deep dive. <laughs> so, I repeat, the first two gear shifts that I saw here, I am 70% sure that these will play a role down the line in the second half of this anime's run. Plot-wise, Malinis. Bakit? Because the, the, only reco- the only form of recollection we have here is the opening scene. Well, um, the first half of the opening scene. Kasi, inulit lang yung final scene no previous episode. Uh, Shigufumi figured that, well, it's going to play a role in this episode and it has. So, that's nece- that was necessary. That was necessary. Kaya, malinis pa rin ang plot. The viewers, uh, ako, I, as the viewer, uh, was glued to the screen. My eyes were glued to the screen as to what's going to happen. Talagang yung focus ko nadikit na sa buong episode because there were the only side scene there was the first half of the opening scene which was fine. Parang it gave me um, a reminder of what happened in the last episode. So, uh, I knew now what to expect. Sort of. <laughs> Basta, malinis ang plot. There were no sleeper moments. Mm-mm. So far, in this anime, I've yet to experience a sleeper moment. And it's already the first half of the run. Pace, flow, and plot. They all work together for this episode. 
giving us another great one from this anime. Wow! Talagang natupad na yung pangarap ko na, mag- na maghaharap ang mga Kuroki at Kirihara. <laughs> at least yung at least yung dalawang panganay. Uh, that's good. We're all good there. So, 9-10-2041 episode 6. Si ako. Oh! <laughs> Two thumbs up! I'm now um, imagining as to how Um, Yuya and Naoya will uh, will conduct their battle if ever. Kasi we, we, we've already seen uh, the battle between uh, Takuya and Naoto. Medyo, medyo deadlock kasi Naoto was on the defensive and Takuya was always on the offensive. Kasi kumaga siguro nire-reserve ni Uh, nire-reserve din Naoto yung talagang yung yung extent ng powers niya for for the end game. Well, if you ask me, when it comes to battle smarts, mukhang panalo si Naoto rito. Panalo si Naoto rito. Takoya is, uh, Takoya is practically inexperienced when it comes to his own psychic powers. We all know that. Kaya, bato sa ng bato, Eh, ang ginagawa ni Naoto, o sige, kahit anong ibato mo sa akin, ibabalik ko sa iyan tenfold. That's, that's exactly what he did. Right? Takoya has been throwing cars at him. Ginagawa pa niyang, ginagawa pa niyang wrecking ball ang mga to. Binabalik. So, in the, um, yeah, you can say that. Naoto proved to be the smarter fighter here. To be the smarter psychic. Uh, talagang he was on the defensive I think he was I think he was analyzing Takoya during their battle mukhang mukhang gano'n nga nangyayari so he's not talking he's not talking BS to Takoya he's just answering Takoya's questions <laughs> so so I'm now wondering how a battle between Naoya and Yuya will will go down That's the battle I want to see this time. So, what will we expect from the second half of, of this anime's one? You can expect uh, the action to pick up. You can expect more lies from the uh, from from the government. You can also expect more appearances from Shoko Futami. It's probably not just. Uh, apparitions siguro she will find a way to escape that laboratory and make an make a physical appearance herself right now uh, the way i see it she's just communicating to to anybody mentally the way i see it also that nakasama rin ang mga nakasama rin ni ng mga kirihara ito sa laboratory si Shoko kasi If you would look at the if you would look at the opening scene yung matandang uh, inaaway ni Naoto this is the same guy that brought Shoko to this laboratory during the pilot You gotta go over the pilot to see that Nandun yung lalaking yun Siya mismo ang nagdala kay Shoko dun sa laboratory na yun And that happened during the pilot. So, this guy is is the tie that binds between Shoko and the Kiriharas. The first tie that binds. The second is of course Miki Tachibana. And of course her her son Masayuki kasi gusto ng tulungan ng mga gusto gusto talaga ng tulungan ng mga Kirihara ito. Bata pa kasi ang lakas na ng psychic power. They I'm sure the Kiriharas have a way of um, teaching this kid how to control his powers. Talaga nakakatakot ang, ang, ang powers ng batang ito. Imagine, he can control... Ilan ba yung nakontrol niya nung, ano? nung uh, episode 4? I think he was able to control 5 people at a time. Ano eh? Tatlo yung sa huli niya, dalawa. Tama! 
He controlled a total of five people in one night. Pero pinakamarami at at one time tatlo. Tatlong utak yung kinontrol niya nun. It just goes to show you how powerful this kid is. So, um, the objective of the Kiriharas here is to, is to, well, help him, help him master his powers. Kasi, they've been, the Kiriharas are experienced with their own powers. Because they have been lab rats, and these same powers are keeping them alive right now as fugitives. So, talagang, they have all the Kiriharas have all the time in the world to master their own powers and they probably want to teach this system of theirs to to Masayuki kasi kung walang, walang magagabay dito mapapariwara ang batang to he will use these these same powers of his to to kill people uh, whenever one Whenever, whenever people piss him off, he will use these powers when when he's pissed off. At yun ang yun ang makakasama. We will probably see those questions be answered in the second half of the run. Guaranteed yan. So again, Nightmare 2041 Episode 6. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great cyberpunk anime manga lifestyle. As usual, no teasers. Based on what we saw here, we are going to wait for next week and watch that episode. Kaya, in the meantime, mga lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Hmm. Okay, ang start ng tournament. <laughs> Faust was able to use, uh, a sort of use Manta to uh, to convince Yo and Ryu and Anna to take him in as a take him in their team pero pinot off sa agad ni ni Ryu so away he goes pero later on inexplain naman ni Manta na ay ay mang ginawa ni ni Faustion kasi eh he, uh, he's it's just to focus on being a shaman and naniniwala siya sa sa goal ni sa goal ni Faust na maibalik maibalik kagad si Elisa. So na so narinig lang dito ni Ana and decided well to to put Faust in uh, in rent in in Yo's team. Kaya rin pumayag na rin si Ana na ilagay si Faust sa sa team na to is because well it's good to have a doctor on the team. Faust is a doctor. Not it's he's not just a shaman, he's also a doctor. So tournament has started. Sino ang unang dalawang combat uh, combating teams? Team Niren at yung Team Earth which consisted of those are that that monk group na Tawani Hao, yung boss kalaban nila. And simply wow. Ipinakita na ni Chocolab yung kanyang kapangyarihan bilang shaman. He is able to uh, incorporate himself into his own oversoul. Kaya, nagmimistulang jaguar ang bilis niya. Galing. He was able to take out both members of boss twice. Eh ngayon, may, may nakalata si Ren dito sa leader nilang to. Kumaga, down na nga ang boss, pag sinabi ng leader, babango na lang. Final scene. This is where, this is where his observation came in. Sabi ni, according to Ren, this is what their leader wants. Unconscious na ang boss. An opportune time to, for for their leader to control them. Something to that effect. Pero nakakataka ko din eh. Wow! All of this was going on while Hal, while Hal was in the audience. Hal uh, and the rest of his, uh, the rest of his lackeys surrounding him. Maraming, patindi nga entourage ni, ni Hal eh. 
So let's break this episode down ARD style, shall we? Pace. Second half of the episode, doon lang bumilis ang pace kasi nag-umpisa na ang tournament. But first half, um, Ryu was, was, Ryu actually did it like Faust to be on the team. Siya ang unang umobject eh. But through well, Manta's, Manta's side of the story, na-convince si Ana na isali na si Faust sa team. Now, this leaves Lizard out. Accord mo. The pacing will make you will make you see this. This now leaves Lizard out of the team. So, who um, who comes in to console him? The leader of the X-Loss. Forgot his name. She, uh, I know where this is going to lead to. Kasi alam ko na yung ano eh. Yung nangyari sa kanya nun sa original series. This is now an indication that Lizard will now join the X-Loss. Ano ko sa inyo eh? Ha? Sasali na si Lizard sa X-Loss. Kasi right there, he was replaced with Faust. I don't know if he's, uh, if he already has, if he already knows it or not. Wala pa tayong idea. But, yep, he has been replaced by Faust in Yo's team. Kasi, if you were going to base it in the previous episode, hindi siya, he wasn't deemed worthy by the Great Spirit. Medyo dinamdam niya ito. Kasi he was that close already to uh, to killing Hao. Andun eh. Andun na rin si Hao eh. So yeah, the pacing will make you realize this. What does this mean? Of course, the pacing is good. It was fast when it had to. It was slow when it had to. Kasi kung binilisan din nila ang pace ng first half ng episode, wala. We might have had a mediocre episode. Flow naman. First gear shift hit was when Lizard got that visit from the leader of the X-Loss. Eh, dun pa lang, nire-recruit na siya ng X-Loss. Right there and then, sa scene na yun. Kasi sabi ng leader, uh, if you want to meet our master, okay. Sige. Tulungan kita. Then, he asked Lizard, you want to become stronger? Mm, of course, umuho naman si Lizard. In all indications, from that scene alone, tuloy-tuloy na ang pagiging ex-loss ni, ni Lizard. Tuloy-tuloy na yun. <laughs> Asahan nyo. Why do I call it a gear ship? Simple. It is a... Um, it's a turning point in in Yo's inner circle actually kasi sumali muna sa X-Loss si Lizard because he was a bit dissatisfied with how Yo is taking all of this but that's why well, that's why that's why Yo is the main protag right he is more fit to be leader than how Yo has showed us many times on why he should be the Shaman King without even saying he should be the Shaman King. So, in, para, hindi, ano yun eh, hindi nakita ni Lizard yun. Based on what we, what we just saw in that gear ship, I am now 99% sure that in the, next, in the next few episodes, we will see Lizard as a new member of the X-Loss. Second gear ship. Well, when Anna finally decided to to put Faust in the team. Well, as you know, this comes right after the scene where Lizer was being comforted by the leader of the X-Loss. Bakit ko tinawag na gearship? Simply rin. This completes Yo's inner circle. Kasi nandun na si Faust eh. Alright? Nandun na si Faust eh. Now, Anna sees this as an opportunity to train under the shaman. Siyempre, ang, uh, ang, well, sort of, ang una niyang tinrain si Ryu, si, si Ryu Nosuke, in the art of cooking. Of course, kasi nauna ng minentor ng lolo ni, 
ni Yo si Rionosuke then si Ana naman when it comes to uh, when it comes to the finer things in life like cooking housework niya ganyan <laughs> mentor mentor siya ni Rionosuke pagdating sa ganon so it's now her chance to train a more powerful shaman Faust is the perfect candidate kasi self-taught pala ang shamanic skills niya so ang punto ni Ana if I can use if I'm able to use pure necromancy to bring Elisa back from the dead papapaya ko itong si Faust na i-mentor ko that's a good deal kasi yun lang naman ang goal ni Faust eh kaya siya naging doktor kaya rin siya naging shaman he wants to bring his wife back from the dead and necromancer si ano si Ana yung simpleng kataraya niya nakakatakot din but anyway final gear shift atlo is when uh, Chocolat realized that Team Earth is no pushover na-realize niya siguro ito even, even, even Ren himself team leader nila na hindi pala boss ang nakakatakot sa team na to kundi yung leader nila medyo na alarma na si Chocolat when when the leader says to boss get up lalaban, lalaban pa rin sila he's getting more alarmed now because the moment he downs boss to dalawa pababangon lang ng leader and medyo natatakot na rin si Chocolat kasi his kapag itong dalawang ito ang, ang lumabon ulit sa kanya mamamatay ito because his because if he attacks these two again they are going to die eh yun ang gusto mangyari ng leader nila leader ng boss ng, ng, ng team na yun sabi pa nga sabi pa nga ng leader eh why don't you kill them para matapos na to come on he's actually egging Chocolat on to kill those two that's how dangerous this team leader is I call this a gear shift because We are now getting an idea of of how uh, strong and loyal these minions of how are to him. Kasi itong uh, well, sabihin natin na pipichugin lang eh si Chocola pa lang down by two men na sila. So tapos biglang itong leader na to ayun kinokontrol kinokontrol ang boss na halata ni Ren. So, what does this say regarding house faction? Meron ding mga so-so shamans sa faction na yan, meron ding mga malalakas. And you can say it's a balanced faction. Yung mga pinagkukuha ni ni Hao bilang mga alipores niya. You can say it's balanced. Kaya sinabi rin, sinabi na rin kasi ni Hao while he was watching this match. Sinabi niya, as long, well, I'm being entertained right now. It will be more entertaining if he if this team wins it. And it also it also goes to show you how heartless Hao is. This man this this uh, this shaman has no regard for human life. him, Team Earth is just the a stock toy. <laughs> I can't call them chess pieces kasi pabuti pa ang mga pyesa sa chess eh, iniingatan habang ano eh. Kaya isang isang maling galaw mo daw, you lose that piece. Kaya ako tinawag na gear shift ito. Maraming pwedeng maraming pang pwedeng i-deep dive sa gear shift, sa gear shift na to. So these three gear shifts that I saw They will play a role at least in the next episode. Pero, ang, ang nakikita ko lang dito na mayroong long-term impact would be the second one. The second one! Kasi, eventually kasi, Faust will be, Faust will remain in Yo's inner circle. Right? Of course, Uh, balak siyang i-mentor ni Ana. 
is still on that team. At saka ano naman eh, um, eventually, mapagbibigyan ni Ana ang wish ni Faust. So, that's another reason why Faust will will always stick it out with you from here on in. That gear ship will make you realize that. Even if you don't, even if you don't watch the original series, Bloodwise, Malinis. Although um, it veered away for a while to to where Lizard is, Malinis pa rin ang plot because oh, Lizard has been replaced in Yo's team by Faust, and we have no idea kung alam na niya ito. Hindi, na, hindi pa natin alam. But one thing is for sure, Lizard, more likely, we will see him in the x loss. Because if you go, the way I see it, the x loss will be split into two, two teams at least. Kasi ang dami nila eh. Nung una nagpakita ang X-Loss sa episode 17, there were only six eh. Yun, dalawang team na. Eh, sa pagkakakwento ng leader kay Lizard in this episode, sinabi niya na, it, something to that effect, hindi lang silang anim ang X-Loss. So that means, meron pang iba na papunta pa lang dun sa sa tournament venue. This also means that Chocolab's information checks out. Talagang tatlong paksyon lang yan. Okay, how? Ang Gandara and the X-Loss. Pwede na rin sabihin fourth faction ang grupo ni Yo. And it doesn't mean yan, sila yung group which composed of his own team, si at saka si Ren. At saka yung team ni Ren. Dalawa na yun. So, you can, you can now call this a four-cornered war for the right to become Shaman King. And the plot will make you realize that. Because the plot is that clean. Even if you're an intermediate anime fan, you can already do a deep dive in, uh, in, this, ep- in this episode because of, uh, because of its clean plot. Face, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode. So, it's another great episode from this anime or from this reboot. I uh, enjoy enjoying it. Eh. Because, mainly because of Faust now joining Yo's inner circle. Pero hindi pa, parang hindi pa officially. Eh. Kaya lang siya napasali sa team ni Yo. It's because of Ana. May best interest si Ana eh. The best is interesting. Oh, and by the way, Anna has already surrendered that um, that that book by that book by How. Binigyan niya mo na kay Silva. And she has already revealed her two guardian spirits, who used to be House guardian spirits, si Goki at si Zenki. mga guardian spirits nanya ito. <laughs> so, although he's Although she's not part of the shaman fight, you can now consider her a shaman. May dalawa pa guardian spirits niya. Which makes her even more scary. <laughs> so, Shaman King 2021, episode 19. Deserve. Mm. Two thumbs up. Excuse me. Well, I'll be looking forward to what's going to um, what's going to happen to Team Daren. <laughs> team Daren. Ano ba klase pa nga ng team yan? Sana Team Ren na lang. Ba? Mas, mas maganda pa tulog eh. Bakit Team Daren? Ano ba yun? <laughs> talagang talagang inipasize talaga inipasi yung pangalan niya eh. This goes to show you how, how much of a selfish dick Ren is. But we all love him. Right? We all love him. He is one of the main contributors to Yo's own character development. Eh? Uh, in the, in, at least in the original series. I don't know how he's going how he's going to help out in Yo's character development here in the reboot. But I'm going to look forward to that. <laughs>
Baka na lang natin yung ano, yung magiging kainat na ng laban na ito. So who's going to win and who's going to lose? So again, Shaman King 2021 episode 19. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great people of our lifestyle. Title of the next episode has been teaser. Hmm. Continuation ito ng 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 match na to. I really can't wait for uh, for this match's outcome. So we'll have to wait for next week and watch that episode. You know the drill, man. All right, style. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Rundown natin. Sato is up to her old tricks again. And this time, sino ba itong tinurukan niya ng Hinamizawa Syndrome Virus? Si Detective Uishi. What happened was, she drugged both her uncle and Detective Uishi in their, um, at their house. Kasi, in-invite ni, ni Tepe si Uishi na pumunta sa bahay nila and actually, nagmakaawa pa nga si Tepe na tulungan siya. Yung kinuwento ni Tepe, of course, this is according to Sato Ko's lie. We all know that. So, a lie has been fed to another person. Si Detective Uishi pa. Unbeknownst to both of them, ayun. Nilagyan na pala sila ng pampatulog ni, ni Sato Ko sa mga drinks nila. Then, well, while both of them were asleep, Sato Ko takes out the needle containing the Hinamizawa Syndrome virus. At itinuro kay Uishi. The minute he was, he, was, he was out of there, gumagano na siya. May nalaman din pala tayo rito na hindi binanggit sa season 1. Kaibigan pala niya yung, yung pinatay nun sa, sa dam war. Kaibigan pala niya yun. Uh, the, one, the one whose body is now missing an arm. Uh, it's a good friend of his. So, sabi niya, uh, he was going through the uh, newspaper articles regarding the dam war. Tapos yung napatay niyang kaibigan. Niya. It won't be long before I, before I could really avenge your death. Final scene. Ang tumumba pala sa parang malit na malit na offering shrine na nakataob na yung idolo ni Oyashiro sama it was detective Uishi's doing remember guys he now has the Hinamizawa syndrome virus so everything he does from that point on nung tinulukan siya ni Sato ko he's totally unaware and he also pisses on uh, on the on the Furudi shrine gate at eto eh, mukhang pinalabas pa niya na si Tepe yung gumawa nun. And while all of this was going on, Iwa or, uh, or, or Yuwa as I pronounce it, is all, uh, uh, is, uh, well, he, she is still entertained at what Satoko is doing. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Let's break this down ARD style, shall we? Pace. Every time Satoko has that look on her on her face, lalo yung pagnamula ng pagnamula ng gitna ng mata niya. Wag yung speaking na bumaga ng pace ng episode. Do do not expect that the pacing of that episode of any episode actually in Higurashi Sotsu will slow down. Ah uh-uh. Not gonna happen. Here in this episode, it did not happen. Kaya, the pacing of this episode was, yep, overall disturbing. Because, you know, okay, we all know that when Satoko has that look in her eye, isa lang ibig sabihin nun, everything is going according to her plan. She even has um, Keiichi and the gang rallying for her. Pero pinapalabas pa rin niya ngayon sa 
cái 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 sao ăn cái nha architect ui xì na nope not gonna happen excuse me so the pacing of this episode disturbing but vintage higurashi kaya napaka enjoyable <laughs> specifically fans of this reboot talagang wow nothing bloody has happened in this episode but the way Satoko projects her um her enthusiasm it is still disturbing in nature <laughs> Gabe, talagang Satoko has completely embraced the role of villain this uh in this season of the reboot. Gabe. Hu, talagang kinarir na. Flow naman. First gear shift is what well, pinapaunahan ko na kayo mga kalaisal. I only saw two gear shifts in this episode. The first one was Tinulukan ni Satoko si Uishi ng Hinamisawa syndrome virus. Ay di natural. So infected na siya. He's now thinking um, violent thoughts, evil thoughts. Uh, sinabi pa kanya no sa ano um, I will avenge your death although I am not going to do it by the book. Putang ina no ibig sabihin ni Uishi noon. Uh, we all know how uh, Detective Uishi operates. Talagang uh, he's a straight arrow cop. Okay, hindi ko rap 'yan. Eh mukhang After uh, receiving the Hinamizawa syndrome virus, 99.99% sure ako na magiging corrupt na siya because he really wants to avenge his friend's death. Grabe. And uh, did you see that scene wherein he was um, that he was staking out the uh, the Sonozaki house? Sinabi pa niya? Ano, nag-enjoy na ba kayo? Mga mamamatay tao kayo? While he was doing this. <laughs> oh! Okay. A lot has happened after Satoko did this to Uishi. Ang dami ng ginawa ni Uishi right after that. That's why I called it the gear shift. A completely different perspective on that arc. Has been pre- uh, has been presented here in this episode. Final gear shift. I told you, the lawa lang was the moment uh, Uishi kicked on that uh, on, on that little shrine. Yung ano ba yun? Tawag don? Offering shrine ng tawag ng mga Japanese dun eh. So talagang totally disrespected that shrine. He even peed. On the uh, on the main shrine's gate, yung yung main gate ng Purude Shrine, do pa siya umihe. Wow! And ngayon, uh, siguro through his actions, inaasum ng ina mga tao ng hinamisawa na si Tepe ang migawa nung to. I don't know if he really wants to frame Tepe or not, pero uh, let's say we assume that this is being caused by the, by hinamisawa syndrome. Oh, right now, because of this gear shift, I am feeling sorry for Tepe Hojo right now. Because his own niece is now, well, through all of these things, mukhang gusto siya patayin ng, ano, ng, sarili niyang, ng sarili niyang pamangkin. But Satoko is doing, wow, uh, the more complex way. Looks like she she really wants to do a number on on her on her uncle. Kanyang kanyang chuhin. Whew. I really feel sorry for Tepe right now. The the scumbag that he is, but in uh, in season two, yep, he is he is probably the most unwilling victim right now in the uh in in season two of the reboot. And when all this. Comes down to a climax. Mo ano ko na mangyayari dito eh. Mo ko alam ko na mangyayari dito. But these two gear shifts, mind you guys, will play a role down the second half of this anime's run. Tandaan niyo, 
We are now in the... Uh, we're now in the second half, okay? We're now in the second half of the run. Because episode 8 is the midway point. Eh? So we've now entered the... Um, the point of no return for Higurashi Season 2. Yep, you can say that. Because... The way I see it, again, this is not going to end well for Tepe Hojo. Uh, ngayon, bin, ngayon, binibase ko lang sa Season 1. What happened? And we all know what happened to him in Season 1. But I sure hope that um something must be done against Satoko. Her evil knows no bounds. That is for sure. That's that's 100% sure. And this episode validates that. Plot lies. Malinis. There were no side scenes. No, um... Well, there actually was one. Pero, kumbaga... To explain a narrative lang eh. Yung... Yung... Pag, yung... Yung pagrarali ni Keiichi sa... Sa CWS main building. Na kasama yung mga classmates niya. Yung talagang... Yung talagang nagpikit sila sa tapat nun. It was shown for only a few seconds. Kasi, uh, kinikwento ng, ng, ng partner ni, ng, ng kumaga ng katrabaho ni Uishi na kung ano nangyari that day. Kasi, he was all day with the tep, he was all day with the hojos. So, binali, so nireport lang sa kanya yung nangyari dun. And, was only so for, for a few seconds. This episode made us focus on what uh, on what happened while uh, while the picketing was happening. Kumbaga, well, uh, sinasabi ko rin sa inyo mga ka-lifestyle, we are seeing season 1 now through Satoko's eyes. Kaya, ito ang lagi, ito ang, ito ang mga nangyari ayon kay Satoko. Well, it's all part of her plan. So, we might as well Sit on our favorite chairs and be traumatized in Satoko's way. <laughs> Malinis ang plot ng episode na to. So, pace, flow, and plot. I almost did not tell one from the other, especially the pace and the plot. Yung flow, madali. Uh, there were only, there were, there were only, I only saw two gear shifts here. Talaga. Pero yung pace at yung plot, medyo nahihirapan ako mag-distinguish. The episode was that good. The plot was that clean. I even had to deep dive. Uh, I had to deep dive a little into it. Another great episode from Season 2 of the Higurashi Reboot. So, Higurashi Sotsu, Episode 9... Deserve. Mm. Two thumbs up. I remember that um that scene so well. Yung yung picketing scene. Uh, nandun sila. Nandun yung mga barkada nila. Yeah, Keiichi, chakay barkada to support Sato ko. I remember that so well. Bakit? Because it tackled a social issue. Eh. Domestic violence. I don't count these things out. Especially when, when a social issue is being tackled. Aha. Uh -huh. Trust me. I'll be glued to my seat. It was a totally different Higurashi that was shown in, in those three or four episodes. Pero, the final episode of that arc, that, yeah, it ended really violently. <laughs> Vintage Higurashi. Now, in season two, they are now explaining this domestic violent thing from... Satoko's point of view. So, pinapalabas niya ni Satoko na gawa-gawa niya lahat ito. If she's in front of her uncle, and of course, uh, si De Detective Uishi, sinasabi niya na binubuli siya ng buong hin Hinamizawa. Here's the question. What was the actual motivation behind Detective Uishi's outburst in the final scene? Yung pagka yung CD pa niya yung offering sa Balita Shrine na ganon. So na bumagsak yung idol ni Oyashiro sama. 
Then in the the main gate of the Furuti Shrine, he pisses right there. He takes a piss. But if you look at it that way, I I don't think he he wants to uh, he wants to he wants to deliberately frame Tepe up. Kasi uh, nagmahawa ng tao sa kanya. Tepe was down on his knees in front of him asking for help. You know, and being the straight arrow cop that he is, he could not turn that thing down. He's a gentleman. Si Detective Uishi. Yung alam ng yung alang mainam sa kanya. Pero after what Satoko did to him, trust me, that gentleman straight arrow side of Uishi is now gone. So we'll probably see his. We'll probably see the psycho Oishi from now on, starting from the final scene of this episode. That's a whole new twist in uh, in the storyline of the reboot. Talagang, uh, well, practically, I, I haven't seen this part of uh, of the Higurashi storyline even in the original series. Ngayon ko pa na makikita to. Someone. Outside of the uh, the the lead character's inner circle, ang tinurukan ni Sato ko dito. So it'll be a whole yeah, it'll be a whole new take for for the viewers. It'll be a whole new challenge for well, consider me a Higurashi fan. It'll be a challenge for all the Higurashi fans to deep dive into this one. It's a whole new deep dive, folks. Talagam. Second half of the run, na <laughs> may feel sa tayo. So again, Higurashi Sotsu episode nine. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up from this anime, mga style. Oh, si Obishi naman kayo. Ano ba the next episode has been teasered? Feeling ko dito na magkakatapos na ng ano tay, ang ang arc nato. But you know what? I don't mind if they ex- uh, if they extend this arc a little bit because it now involves Detective Oishi himself, the one who has been trying to solve the Hinamizawa murders for years. Ngayon, siya na ang biktima. <laughs> siya na ngayon ang biktima. So, what's he gonna do? Okay, we he's already given us a hint as to what he can do. He disrespects. A shrine, and he pisses on the main gate of the of the main shrine. He has disrespected Oyashiro Sama twice, and it only took him about uh, five minutes. So you know the drill, mga lifestyle. We will wait for next week, and we're gonna watch that episode. In the meantime. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. This is the anime's weirdest episode. <laughs> Forgive me, my lifestyle. Kung medyo sasablay ako sa rundown ko ng story ng ito, right? So, well, I'll do the best I can. We open with. Hoshi talking to an old man in a wheelchair. Mukhang alam na beforehand ni Hoshi na mawawala sila. So that's that's the, that's the hint I'm getting. Then it now moves to to where Team Nagara is in this um alternate world where in they're in a movie theater and there are stocks of film reels Rosdani is going through. Now, it these film reels turn out to be Nagara's own memories. Ever since they got into this world, this has been going on for two months. And for two months, Team Aki is being is hunting them down, like like they're wanted criminals. It even militarized its own ranks. I'm beginning to smell that Lord of the Flies atmosphere here. While this was going on, Mizuho beats 
a new character uh, in the form of a dog named Yamada Kunihiko who also happens to be a student of the same high school all of them are in. Pero tinatanong ni Rashdani, paano yun? Eh, di ka namin kilala. Yamada explains that he is already 5,000 years old. Rashdani now assumes that Yamada comes from the future. Mga ka-lifestyle, it gets weirder from here on end. <laughs> Team Hoshi has already accepted the fact that um, there's, there, there, there's no way going home. So, talagang tanggap na nila and they're trying to do the best they can to live in this world na. Until Nozomi comes along and enlightens them. So, ganito ang ginagawa namin. Yeah, sila, Nagara's making progress, also Roshdani. And what Team Oshie is now convinced that they should now collab with Team Nagara. Roshdani has proposed this idea of making a director's cut from all these film reels that they have gone through so far. Plus, that extra, well, that abnormal film na na discover mismo ni Nagara. Talagang it's, ano eh, worn out siya, and hindi siya kasha dun sa projector na nandun sa, sa world na yun. So, they proceeded with making this director's cut. And while Team Nagara was doing this, Team Hoshi was um, was also busy finishing their side project naman. Yung turning that shelter into an ark. Yung shelter na pinag, uh, pinagka-classrooman nila ngayon. They were successful at it by adding the final piece which is a um, superpower holdover. Parang, parang malaking batong ganun eh. Nilagay nila nila sa gitna ng ganun. And whoo! power up. Team Nagara is also finished with the director's cut project. So, nag-convene. Okay. So, ready na ba tayo? Binigyan na ng go signal si Nagara. Presses the enter button on that laptop. Umpisa na yung director Scott. Then all of a sudden, Team Aki uh, starts to intervene. Who does Aki send to 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 stop this? Si Asakase. But, he wasn't able to to fully use his powers against the against the now uh, the now allies na Team Nagara at Team Hoshi. He couldn't use it. So, ang sinisisi niya ngayon si Nagara. <laughs> but nope, it's probably um, a consequence of of Team Nagara's plan set that has been set into motion. Kung maga, he, could, he can't stop it anymore. But, as the uh, director's cup was rolling, they suddenly see themselves graduating from high school. They're in their own world na. But, hindi na mahawakan yung may ibang tao. So, ano daw mga multo na sila? Now, the old man na kausap kanina ni uh, ni Hoshi sa opening scene, kausap ngayon si Nagara. And he actually showed this, the role of film that contains the director Scott. Ito sabi niya, nice try, but you are in the actual world. But the ones you're seeing here are the originals. You are just copies. Final scene. Kinunclude na ni Raj Dani that this is not just a random occurrence of events. This is God rolling the dice. Again, Nagara is blaming himself but Hoshi reassures him that nope, this is not your fault. This is a true random act. It's out of their hands, basically, when they rolled the director's cut. But on a, on the on the side, Team Aki is claiming this as a victory. Alam na, alam naman natin, cult mentality ang ini-instill ni Aki dito sa mga ibang estudyante. Talagang paniwalang paniwala siya dito sa, sa punyetang Aki na to. Yamada already said here that May, may, suspe- may suspecha na siya that this is no teacher. Kasi ang kinukuha lang ng drift na to are the school and its students. So, this Yamada, this new character, knows knows something that uh, the rest, that the other characters don't. Kasi 
he's been in this drip for five five thousand years. So he's pra- Let's assume that he's practically seen the seen it all now. But in that final scene, oh, I feel sorry for Nagara and the others. Grabe. Para nag nagmistulan silang multo rito. And it really looks that way because in this in this actual world, Nozomi is already dead. May ano nga eh, may alay nga na bulaklak doon sa pagkain at food and drinks doon mismo sa desk niya sa classroom nila. At iniiyakan yung table niyang yun. Nakita mismo ni Nozomi. And this really made her na, talaga na depress. Uh, of course, there there's Nagara to to cheer her up. Ang tanong ngayon, what happens now to Sunny Boy? <laughs> We're now going to break this episode down ARD style. Bear with me because this is a really weird episode we're going to we're going to break down. Kaya Ha. Ay. Ah. Mm. Pace. It's become a little tense come the second half of um the episode. Dahil while Team Hoshi agreed to the project Team Nagara is working on at tutulong din sila, they were working on their own project, which is turning that shelter into an ark. Siguro through no some motiva- motivation that uh, may pag-asa pa sila makalabas sa mundong yun. That, they're, that they're, there's still a chance for them to return home to their own world. So, kaya sila gumawa ng ano eh. Kaya nila pinlano na gawing ark ang shelter na to. So, to each his own muna. Team Nagara was able to finish their project. Team Hoshi was able to finish their project. At tamang-tama, nag yung dalawa. If it weren't for Team Hoshi's initiative in turning that shelter into an arc, wala. Baka ginulpin na sila ng Team Aki. And the pacing will make you realize that. The pacing was well thought of kasi pag ganon-ganon eh, yung, yung scenes uh, one minute they were discussing this, the next minute they were dis- they were uh, the anime is now sh- showing the events that led to that discussion. Kumaga, uh, current timeline, backstory three seconds. Current timeline, backstory for three seconds. Ganun lang yun eh. This anime now has a way of um, telling backstories as quickly and as understandable as it can. Quick but understandable backstories. Yeah, ganyan lang. But they're still sticking to the main timeline, uh, the main continuity of uh, this episode. Uh, I don't know what kind of grind Madhouse went through for this episode, pero <sighs> na feel ko ang weirdness ng episode na to because of the um, the constant um, backward, forward, backward, forward type of pacing. Pero hindi ka mabibuisit sa pacing. Flow naman. First gear shift was was when Rajdani discovered that the the film reels were um, were Nagara's memories and hindi niya ma-manipulate na maigi nito kung wala si Nagara. Kaya kailangan every time he uh, he edits he edits a uh, piece of film from that stockroom kailangan present si Nagara in that world. So, ayun, yung gawa niya. Pero, there was, there was also one thing that he discovered. He cannot rewind the reel para makita kung may, kung may, syempre, kung may sablay. Nope. The rewind knob on that projector keeps jamming. Hindi, hindi niya mai, hindi niya maibalik talaga ng ganun. Hindi niya maibalik to rewind. Napansin din ni Nagara. I guess, sabi ni Nagara, well, I guess we can't, uh, we can't see the past. Does this mean we can't see the past? Well, sinigunda naman siya ni, sinigunda naman siya ni Rajdani. You got a point. So, we, we can only see the present and the future. Kahit ano pang gawing pilit ni Rajdani, no. It doesn't give in. Talagang hindi niya mai-rewind yung tape. He couldn't rewind it. Wow, what a gear shift. <laughs> Second gear shift is when the day that Team Hoshi finally decided to to um to work to work closely with Team Nagara because if you are Team Hoshi, 
Sino pwede mong pagkatiwalaan ngayon? Ano naman Team Aki? <laughs> the next best option, ane, the only best option right now is Team Nagara. Oh, you got, you got the classes resident genius there in Rajdani and of course, the, um, the poster boy of that team, si Nagara, who has that weird power of uh, recreating the world he is currently in. And right now, I think his I think his mere thoughts created this world naman yung film room kasi puro memories niya ang nandoon sa role of film eh. puro memories niya so wow I hope I don't get a headache while breaking this episode down second gear ship pa lang tayo so final gear ship was when they were able to go back to their own world pero what they thought were their replacements kasi kamukha, kamukha eh, and they couldn't touch any person eh. they realized that through this old man's um, expose that they are just copies ang mga original nandito lang sa world na to they didn't leave the actual world so ano to? I don't know if I don't know if this if this old man has ul- ulterior motives that's why he said that or talagang gano nga nangyari they were able to return to their own world pero they have been replaced by the originals and I thought Sonny Boy wouldn't get any weirder than this hmm oh These three gear shifts that I saw will probably run the second half of this anime. Not just be a factor, but this will these three will completely change the overall mindset of the entire class in this anime. Hindi lang lahat sila, team Hoshi, team Nagara, team Aki. This will completely change their mindset kasi eh, ang lumalabas ngayon, tama si Hoshi. That there's no going home. Hindi na sila makakawi kahit kailan. Although I hate to admit it that Hoshi's guess is correct because of what happened in the final scene. Uh, what happened in the in the final gear shift. Plot-wise. Planchado. Because I think this was Madhouse's mindset for this episode. Kasi, ang dami mong i... Ang daming factors to... To show the, um, to show the audience. So, you really have to... You really have to iron it out, eh. Okay. Ganito na yung pinag-usapan. Ito naman yung pinag nun. Ganito yung pinag-usapan. Ito naman ang pinag nun. So, they really had to... Do it scene by scene by scene. Leading... So, the climax of this episode. Pero hindi, hindi ko masasabing malinis kasi yung focus ng audience hindi, ano eh, hindi nakatoon sa isang, ano lang eh, sa isang continuity lang. It so different continuities. Kaya, in order for the audience to keep up, at saka para hindi sila ma- mawala ng ganang panoorin ng episode na to, they, you re- they I think Manos really did uh, really did grind for this episode's plot as in yung um, they made their own continuity with this episode parang taking out several continuities and iron them out in such a way na na lalabas pa rin isang continuity lang pero for season anime fans like me I would easily see that na ano eh na iba't ibang continuity ang nandito sa episode na to. Which contributes to the weirdness of this episode. Pero, wag nyo. Pace, flow, and plot, they all work together for this episode. And again, Madhouse has, has over-delivered. It just gave us, arguably, the anime's weirdest episode. And, 
What a way to cap off the first half of this anime's run. Give us an episode as weird as this. So, Sunny Boy, episode 6. Isip, isip po. Galing na eh. Oh. Kutamsa. An episode as weird as this, I tend to deep dive. Kasi ang, ang daming pwede possibilities eh. I think Majdani has fully figured out how Nagara will figure now in this world. He is, well, Nagara has that ability to recreate the world that the world that he is in from destruction. Kanyari, uh, nagkaroon ng massive na sunog noon, forest fire, o di sunog lang ng halaman. But, in time, as quickly as the fire destroyed those plants, tumubo silang lahat uli. Parang walang nangyari. And now, Rajdani has discovered another power of Nagara. Again, siguro, unconsciously naman ito. He can create um, alternate versions of his consciousness. Imagine if you're Nagara and you're able to recreate your entire consciousness as a film room. Isang buong mundo na naman ito. Isang, buong, isang alternate dimension na naman ito. Nabago. I don't know. But, I think Aki is scared of Nagara. Scared of what he can do. Kaya, kinuha niya naman si Asakase to somehow to hopefully suppress Nagara's potential. But, if you saw this episode already, nakita niyo naman, sablay si Asakase. When the, uh, when the director's cut, when the director's cut started rolling and the arc function na nilagay ng Team Hoshi doon, they did work together. If there's one thing that that uh, that scene told us, I think Team Nagara and Team Hoshi should work closely together from now on. Although, alam natin lahat na may ulterior motives din si Hoshi. Against a despotic bitch like Aki, yup, you need all the help you can get. Talagang... Aki will stop at nothing to uh, to keep the students in this world. Although she knows that Nagara is probably the real savior. Pero pinalalabas lang niya si Asakase to the other students. But there is one ray of hope there. Tumawag yata si Ace kay Misuho. And he... He told Misuho na siguro um, that they want that his group wants to meet up with uh, with Team Nagara and Team Hoshi so sabi nga ni Hoshi okay they're they're looking for our help uh, we, we, got, we, we have to listen to them eh sabi naman ni sabi naman ni Misuho de Pinahirapan na lang si Nagara eh. Tutulungan natin yung mga, hi, yung mga, yung mga hinayupak na yan. Hindi! Sunugin ang buhay yan. <laughs> But, Rajdani seconded Hoshi's uh, opinion on the matter. Sabi ni, ni, ni Rajdani, maybe we should listen to them first. Baka, baka nakita nila yung pagkakamanin nila and they want to side with us now. Who knows? That might happen in the ne- in the next few episodes kasi nakikita na nila Ace kung gaano gaano kasamang babae itong si Aki. Who knows? <laughs> Ang dami pwedeng mangyari. Based on what we saw in this episode, the possibilities are endless. And we and we just tackled only the first half of its run. So it's still up in the air. It's still free for discussion. So again, Sunny Boy Episode 6 Two thumbs up Another two thumbs up for Madhouse Maka Lifestyle Again, no teasers Madhouse is getting to that trend of, uh, of not teasering the episode na katulad ng mga may mga kasama nila in this roster like Night at 2041, Tokyo Avengers I forgot. Basta ito tatlong ito talagang noted, talagang notable sa akin na hindi nagtitisyo ng episode. But they are great animes. What do we do? We just do the drill. We wait for next week 
and watch that episode. Until then, mga ka lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. The road to the finale has just begun, folks. During this courtesy call now with Lord Rotven, sinabi ka ni Vanitas kasi ini entertain ni, ni Rotven si Noy as to the as to the fascinating things he has in his office. Eh, medyo na na ostrak si si Noy sa mga pinag sa sa mga nakita niya dito sa sa opisina ni Lord Rotven. Then Vanitas swap. Alam natin na si Vanitas basag trip minsan. Sabi niya kay Lord Rodven, Can we just cut to the chase? So, sinabi ni, ni Rodven, I'd like to know more about you, Vanitas. About the Blue Moon Clan, the book, everything about you. Sinabi naman ni Vanitas, Okay. On one condition. Pumayag. So, sinabi lang ni Vanitas na he wants to meet the Queen. Itinanong ni Rodven, siyempre, kumbaga, Rodven is the, uh, is the Lord Overseer of, uh, of this world. Kasi hindi pa pwede si Luca. Luca is the, kumbaga, the Grand Vizier to the Queen. So, habang, hin- habang wala pa sa hustong edad si Luca, si Rodven ang tumatayo ngayon. So, itinanong niya, bakit? Why do you want to see the Queen? Vanitas simply said something that pissed off Lord Rotven and even Jean. Because I believe the Queen is spreading these curse bearers. Oh! Buntik na siya patayin ni Rotven dito. But uh, pinigilan, pinigilan lang siya ni Luca. And Rotven just said, I am now forbidding you to set foot in this castle again, human. Itapos. <laughs> they went back to, to Count Orlok. So nag-report sila. Same thing, oh, same thing happened with Count Orlok. And alaman niya na may ginawang yun. Yung ginawang kabastos, kabastusan na yun ni Vanitas, nagalit din siya. Nagalit din siya. I don't know why vampires are so pissed off at people uh, throwing business accusations at their queen. Hindi pa muna. But this is their culture. Kaya... So, Vanitas and Noy are no longer in good graces with Count Orlok and Lord Rotven. So, basically, ban sila in the vampire world. <laughs> so, one week has passed. Nagkaroon sila ng, uh, what you call this? Ng inkling na this series of uh, vampires disappearing. As in, yung nalam, kasi may... Meron ba lang nabasang file si Noy doon habang nagwawala si Count Orlok? Nalaman niya na in the past, in the, in the week that they were in uh, Altus Paris that three members have already disappeared that week. So, pagka, pagkasipa sa kanila ni Orlok, ayun, they started investigating na. And they met up again with Dante, Johan, at saka isa pang anong babae. They're all half vampires. Kumaga dumb tawag sa kanila. Basta basta crossbreed ka ng tao at saka vampire. They're called a dumb or a dumb peer. May nalaman sila from these three. There is a certain group who are kidnapping these vampires. They're called the Chasseurs. Sila ang mga alagad ng Roman Catholic Church. Kumaga pa assigned to take out vampires. Yes, folks. The Catholic Church. Assumption kaga di Vanitas, kailangan puntahan natin ang headquarters ng Chasors. Alam ni Vanitas kung nasan talaga ang ang pinaka entrance ng headquarters sila. So, pinuntahan niya, but unfortunately, no tags along. Buti na lang. I'll explain later. Nagpanggap sila bilang Chasor. Then, Uh, meron silang nakita parang museum ng mga bungo ng mga vampire all of a sudden this another chaser comes in his name Roland so napakilala siya he's a captain so sinabi ni Vanitas you're one of the 12 captains of the chasers final scene e yung pala 
Sila pala ginugoyan ng Roland na to. In uh, in, in in this scene, he throws Vanitas in in a prison cell. Akala akala to kasi ni Vanitas. May eh, papatunod si Roland na buksan yung pinto. No. Pinabuksan nga sa kanya pero siya ang inilagay doon. And Roland now turns his attention to Noy. Halata na pala niya na vampire ito. So, tinapunan niya ng flash grenade. Ayun, di na makakita si Noy. Then, he pulls out a syringe. Tinulukan niya sarili niya. Parang ano siya eh. Parang steam pack. So, while he was blurting out uh, this, uh, this holy objective, that's where the episode ended. As if there... As if Vanitas and Noy's problems haven't um, haven't gotten worse. Now, they're facing the Chassors. Let's break that episode down ARD style, shall we? Pace. What? For the first half of the episode, Tensha. Kasi, Vanitas has just made this bold accusation that the Queen is spreading these curse bearers. So, natural. You accuse something of the Queen, whether whether it's true or not, you would piss every vampire off in the room. Yun nga nangyari. Namagitan si Luca. And much to the disappointment of his uncle, si, si Rockbed. Then, Nung ni-report niya naman nito kay Count Orlock, si Count Orlock naman na nagalit sa kanila. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was absolutely tense nung kay Lord Rodman. It almost didn't end well. Kay Count Orlock naman, medyo nakakatawa. So, either way, they got kicked out of, of Altos Pari. The pacing will make you realize that. <laughs> now, in the, um, yung sumunod na third ng episode, medyo, medyo bumagal kasi Vanitas was thinking really hard as to how to infiltrate the Chassors siguro at that point at that at that point naalala niya yung lumang passage yung lumang passage ng mga Chassor so much to noise surprise alam na alam ni Vanitas kung saan papunta kung saan kung ano mga pasikot-sikot dito no, I was absolutely surprised. Then, it only became tense again during the final scene. The pacing was really good. Kasi, especially during the first half of the episode, kasi they came from a scene wherein Lord Ruffin really almost, almost went full meltdown on both of them. Si Noy at si Vanitas. Pinigilan lang siya ng pamangkin niya. Then, Nung humarap, nung humarap yung dalawa kay Count Orlock naman, ganun din ang reaction, pero, mas naka, pero nakakatawa naman. <laughs> hindi, siya, hindi siya actually tense, pero it's a funny moment, so the pace is up. <laughs> the pacing was really good. I think this kind of a pacing was necessary for the final scene. I think Bones, uh, the, the animation studio, is trying to introduce to the audience that there is a third force in this anime. Yun nga, the Chassors. So, not only does Vanitas and Noi have to deal with Charlatan, they have to deal with the Chassors also. At mukhang, this group will, know, will show no signs of let up. They know that Noi, they know now that Noi is a vampire. And, yun nga lang, hindi pa alam ni Roland na itong ikinulong niya Ayaw mismo si Vanitas. If I were Roland, I would... I would back down a bit. Kasi, I don't know um, what Vanitas can do against humans. I don't know what the book can do against humans. Yun ang theory ko dito. The pacing made me realize that. Flow naman. First gear ship was when... Lord Rodman almost lost it. He almost did a number on both Vanitas and Noi. Eh, ba naman to si Vanitas eh. Alam naman yung, alam naman yung high-level noble itong si Lord Rodman. 
he directly accuses the queen of being uh, uh, na, na being promotor ng mga curse bearer. You don't do that. <laughs> that is a that is a uh, that is a high risk move in diplomacy. <laughs> yeah, if you can call that. We all know how brash this main protag is. If he wants to ask a question, he will ask it. No matter uh, no matter who you are or what you are. Ganong ka ganong ka angas ang ang main protag na to. Why did I call it the gear shift? Simply lang because this now complicates things. They no longer because of Vanitas's brash accusation, they no longer have have that political leverage. Eh, imbis naman na oh, medyo ina, ina amenities na ni Noy. Although, he doesn't know it, okay? Ina amenities na ni Noy. Eh, Vanitas went impatient on the matter. So, sinabi niya, Lord Rodman, let's just cut to the chase. In a sales call, you do not do that this early in the conversation. No. Nope. Not gonna happen. Right now, Vanitas and Noy are on their own because of this gear shift. Second gear shift is when Vanitas um, decides to investigate uh, the, the, um, the chest source matter on his own. And Noy decides to Noy decides to tag along. Buti na lang uh, nag-decide siya na well, payagin si Noy na sumama sa kanya. Kung hindi, we would have seen uh, a bloodier end to this episode. That's why I called it the gear ship. Yung pagkaka-invest, yung pagkaka yung pagkaka-decide ni yun, pagkakapunta nila do sa sa mismo yung talagang catacombs, yung talagang taguan ng mga ng mga chasur. So well, Noy was actually surprised at na alam pala ni Vanitas ito. Alam pala niya. Final gear ship is when well Roland um play the fast one on them. So, kumaga sila na pala sila na pala ang ginagago ni Roland. So, basically Roland saw through their disguises na figure out niya na vampire si Noy at human lang ito si Vanitas. But he probably doesn't know that the human that the human he put in that prison cell is the Vanitas. So, everything is up the everything is up in the air as to what is about to do to Noi and on and how Vanitas is going to get themselves out of this. Kasi Chasur ito, Cap, captain ng Chasur ito. So medyo malakas na nila lang to. Grabe. These three gear ships, the way I see it, will dictate the second half. Uh, will dictate the final four episodes of this anime. You say we're on the road to the finale now. It's episode eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're now on the road to the finale. So everything is now up in the air as to whether. Vanitas will directly deal with the Chasurs first or will he let Noi deal with this one first? That's at least for the next episode. But these three gear shifts, the way I see it, I repeat, will dictate the final four episodes of this um, of this first core of the anime. It has been announced beforehand that the case study of Vanitas is a two- core series. Ibig sabihin nun, ane, take two. It has been announced uh, beforehand that the case study of Vanitas will be a split core series. Isa lang ibig sabihin nun. Merong season 1 and after and after uh, the next season, season 2 naman. That's what you call a split core series. Talagang inannounce na beforehand na seasons one and two will be airing. Season one ngayon, season two by 
by my fair deductions would probably be winter 2022. Pero that's just my observation. Okay. So we'll have to wait for the official announcement for that. Plot wise. Malinis. <laughs> In order for Bones to to tell the audience as to um, how much of a rogue Vanitas now is, is and even Noi, if it weren't for a clean plot, we wouldn't we wouldn't be seeing and feeling that at the same time. Feel nothing lahat na ako, sabi ko. Ka, ako kanini. Ano ba naman yan Vanitas? You know very well that when you accuse their queen of something, whether it be baseless or not, swerte mo kung, swerte mo kung buhayin ka ng mga vampire na yan. But, he got away with, he got away with his life right now. Nung sa episode na yun, he practically got away with his life. Kung hindi dahil kay Luca. Now, to relieve ourselves of that, um, disheartening moment nung nag-report naman yun nga nung nag-report si Lavanitas at Noy kay Count Orlock naman syempre nagalit ito pero in a funny way <laughs> so kumbaga na-cancel out yung funny moment na yun ang ang eksena yun regarding him and Lord Rotven so it made it easier for us now to 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 bear the thought of Vanitas now not in good graces anymore with the vampire noble with the vampire nobility eh. that's gone <laughs> that is absolutely gone so considered rogue na silang dalawa ni ni Noy ay nako nadami pa to si Noy <laughs> so that's what the plot made me realize cause it was that clean so, pace, flow, and plot. I almost did not tell the pace and the plot from each other. Medyo nahihirapan ako talaga ngayong, ngayong review na to. Ibig sabihin nun, it was that good an episode. Surprise! Sabi ka siguro ng episode. You're now on the road to the finale. <laughs> so, the case study of Vanitas, episode 8. Titingin pa. Eh, maganda naman. Oh. Two thumbs up. Excuse me. From the looks of it, based on this episode alone, ang nakikita ko rito eh, siguro, down to the final two episodes, magkakasago pa ang ano eh, ang tatlong paksyon na to eh. Vanita Sinoy, the charlatan and the chasers. Magkakasago pa siguro ang tatlong ito. It will, it, there, the way I see it, there will be a three-way battle for these three in the finale. Bottom line, Vanitas is accusing the queen of harboring charlatan. Charlatan, on the other hand, wants to, well, wants to, um, turn vampires into curse bearers as many as they can. That's how evil this organization is. The Chasors, on the other hand, uh, they they seem to not care if the vampires have their own problems with charlatan. Basta vampire ka, tetepukin ka nila. They will purify you. That's the way I see on how this is going to go down in the finale. Three-way battle between those three. Yeah. Vanitas and Noy, Charlatan, and the Chasors. Ngayon, kung talagang uh, kumbaga finorsik na sila ng vampire nobility, this will be a three-way battle Vanitas and Noy cannot win. Because they're up against two established organizations. In the way if you can if you can deep dive into each based on this episode dalawang malalaking organ, organisasyon ito eh silang dalawa lang eh 
They're just they're just two people. They're just two people. Kahit sumama pa sila Jean at Lucas sa kanila para tumulong or even si Domi. They can't win. Now, the way I see it, it is now important to be for Vanitas to be in good graces again with the Vampire Nobility. If he wants to go up against both Charlatan and the Chassors. Eh, medyo... Oops! Ganito lang yan. If, if he can... If he can gather solid enough evidence to link the Queen to Charlatan, baka pakinggan na siya ngayon ni Lord Watven. Ah, uh, but the way I see it, he's... Uh, although, although he's a vampire, he's, he, he's a gentleman. And... Um, he's more than willing to hear both sides of the story. Medyo, well, natural reaction na naman yung ginawa niya. You, you accuse his queen of that? Buti, buti nga, pini, buti nga pinigilan siya ng pamangkin niya. Kundi, wala, patay si Vanitas dun. <laughs> wala, wala, baka wala na siyang ulo ngayon. <laughs> so, if he can, if he can do that, he'll, he'll probably be in good graces again with Lord Rodven. Now, if he can also convince Count Orlok that the Chassors are behind these abductions, mm, he's now in good graces again with Count Orlok. Now, if you have these two powerful vampire nobles at your side, Charlatan is an easy job. Ganun lang yan. Ganun lang. Ganun lang. Ganun lang. Takbo ng politika dyan eh. Okay? Whether it be anime or anime live action or in real life, Politics is the same. You have to provide value to someone in order to be in good graces with that person. Tama ba ako, mga ka lifestyle? So, I am so excited as to how the final four episodes will go down. <laughs> Kasi may bagong kalabang pumasok eh. The Chassors. Okay? They're doing this by the grace of God. Bullshit. <laughs> Tanda, well, if you're going to base it on how corrupt the Catholic Church was 500 years ago, dito pasok ang mga chassors. <laughs> if, if I know, your, your, lead, your leadership is just as corrupt as these human politicians. So, do not trust the chassors yet, mga ka-lifestyle. They may be they may be holy men but they but they too have ulterior motives. Tandaan yan. And I'm very sure the final four episodes will prove that. So again, the case study of Vanitas episode 8. Hindi ko na makalimutan. Oh, to the top. Another to the top. Tayo next episode as with teaser. Mm. Mukhang alam ko na kung sino mananalo sa, sa labang ito. But, I don't want to believe it one bit kasi teaser lang. So, we'll just have to do the drill, mga ka-lifestyle. We wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Enjoy lang! May dalawa na silang bagong kakampi. They were trying to figure out what what just happened. They failed to protect Kazu, Kazuha. So, inaamin naman ng lahat ng knocker-ups yan. Uh, it was a major failure. Then, come these two knocker-ups from the countryside. From Kurashima Island ba yun yan? Si Rando at si Oda. I think they were part of the first batch of knocker-ups na, na diniscover ni Tris. Ayon sa kwento ni Rando, Tris is actually a character he was drawing. During the first time he got sucked into the tromery, meron pumasok na kaluluwa kay Tris. Boom! Tris is now a living being. So, that's where it all started. Side note, tinanong ni Rena kung, kung ilan silang knocker up dun sa, sa island na yun. Sinabi ni Oda, Sampuraw sila. But, they were trying to um, to get Tris to come back 
to come back with them. Eh, sabi ni Tris, hindi pa tapos ang trabaho dito. Essentially. At kaya pala iniwan ni Tris yung yung mga knock-ups doon because sampu ba naman sila knock-ups so they're holding uh, the enemy at bay there. There now seems to be a connection between the evil ones doon sa island na yon and the church. Dinijus ka agad ni Jessica yon nung minsan sila nag-meeting. Right after they met uh, Rando and Oda. While they were at it, there was, uh, they actually um, dealt with two weirds consecutively. Yung isa, nasalba nila. Uh, yun yung first time na nakipag, kumbaga, sumama na sa labanan sila Rando at Oda. But in the second, medyo failure. Because, ganito pala yan. Once a dreamer offers offers up their wish to the church, bang! Magiging solid na weird sila. And they can now invade the real world. Which will now tend to be a problem for any knocker-up. Ayun nga. Eh, Rando had no choice but to, but to kill this weird right there. Ang laking gulo ng ginagawa eh. Patay yung huli. Final scene. We see the hierarch again declaring that the time is nigh. I don't know what it, I don't know what he fucking what he's fucking talking about. Pero for sure he's up to no good. So let's start breaking this episode down, ARD stuff. Pace. The pacing of this episode is um rather Naramdam ko medyo imbalance kasi parang hindi hindi tama yung ano eh yung to call this yung distribution ng fast and slow sa episode na to but i'm not complaining third times in this episode na medyo fast yung pace pero hindi kailangan the one the one scene i'm citing here is the um yung isang meet up scene between the Shibuya knocker ups so, medyo Eh, yung kabilisan yung pagkaka uh, yung uh, what you call this? Medyo may kabilisan yung itong scene na to, although it's meant to be slow kasi they are theorizing, they are putting their heads together for for the situation. Parang hindi para nabibilis ako eh. All right, nabibilis ako. But but mostly the pacing uh, the pacing was typical for a superhero anime. For the record, mga ka-lifestyle, this side to the animation is not a cyberpunk anime. It's a superhero anime. Kita nyo naman eh. Five, um, five unlikely heroes battling uh, a weird but influential enemy. When they, when they meet the enemy, they turn into, wow, okay? they turn into soup up uh, soup top heroes yun. Superhero Superhero anime nga to <laughs> Flow naman First gear shift Was when Was uh, During the fur During the time When they were Trying to save The first dreamer Which was successful Pero Ryuhei took this As parang Sinasapawan sila uh, I don't know I don't know guys ha, Pero Medyo dumbfounded Ang Ang reason ni uh, ang tingin ni Ryuhei sa ano eh kung bakit um bakit siya tawag dito hindi siya at is kila Rando at Ode eh. It's dumbfounded. Para pero naman sila knock her up. What does this gear shift tell us? Medyo detailed na explanation ko. Unang-una sa lahat, hindi dapat magkaroon ng professional jealousy among the knock her ups. You have a common enemy for God's sakes. Hindi nyo kailangan ito. The Shibuya knocker ups are, are on a losing streak. They just lost a key witness to the church. Nakalaban nila. E mukhang magiging asset pa nga ito kung talagang sinigurado nila yung safety nito. It, it, Kaso ka can be an asset to the knocker ups. Dahil, minsan na siya naging member ng church. So, alam niya kung ano ang culture ng organisasyon na to. And, she actually knows the name of the hierarch who just made it, who made his appearance in the final scene. But, nakutaan sila ng church. 
Napatay si Kaso ha So This professional jealousy Is out of place Kaya If I were the UA I would set that aside muna Kasi Hello You're on a losing streak Si Buya Nakorops You don't need this Second gear shift Was when What? Um, during that meeting scene Yung huling meetup scene nila Maraming denivulge the theory Si Jessica doon Most especially the one Connecting the church With the evil ones na Na, na talagang kalaban nila Ronda at Oda uh, Nila Rando at Oda Sa Kurashima Island Yung kung saan ay sampu silang knocker up doon Ang Analysis kasi ni Jessica rito there is a connection between the church and the evil ones. Kumbaga, the church is this cult trying to release the evil ones from there. Kung isipin nyo, pwede. Kung hindi deep dive nyo, ha? And they're using the, of course, they're, they're using any means they can to achieve this. Like, yung know, somnium drops. Um, uh, what's it called? This collaborating with, um, uh, agents from another dimension Lahat Gagawin nila If you would deep dive into it more Mukhang Itong mga uh, Itong mga weird at disarya na nakakalaban nila They were probably sent by the evil ones To uh, well, to, to To wreak havoc on our own world Pwede niyong mangyari yun that's uh that this is the main reason why I called it a gear ship yung meetup senior kasi sila mismo yung mga lead characters mismo ang nag deep dive para sa atin but it sparked another deep dive by by me for this review so kaya ako tinawag na kaya ako tinawag na gear ship final gear ship rando euthanized the other dreamer yung talagang yung pangalawang dreamer no no it's the dreamer in this episode na hindi na nila na-save kasi inalay na niya ang kanyang healing. So, once the dreamer does that, nope, hopeless case na to. The moment you kill that weird, the dreamer dies. Ayun nga. Patay! May marka rito ng church. Uh, another loss. Another loss for them. For, for the knocker-ups. Although, um, yung dreamer na the dreamer that they managed to save in this episode yeah that, that uh, that's a win that is a win pero itong dreamer na to they took more time than usual to prevent the dreamer from offering up his wish the only cause I can cite here is Ryuei's professional jealousy over uh, Rando and Oda yun ang yun ang pumatay sa dreamer na to why do I call this a gear ship? Siyempre, you can you can actually see that there's a fragile relationship going on here. Kaya if Ryuhei doesn't shape up, the losing streak, uh, they they might start a new losing streak. So, gano naman yari dito. These three gear shifts will definitely play a role down the line in this anime. If ang kilang talaga dito. If they don't actually work together as a team, kumaga as in if the if the Shibuya knocker ups and two of the Kurashima knocker ups don't actually work as a team after this incident yung yung huling dreamer hindi nila matatalo ang church. Kahit pito na sila ngayon. Plotwise. Malinis. Because Isang continuity lang ang sinunod Ng episode And um, My focus was just on this episode Talagang Wala siyang side stories and, well, there, was, there was one side story Pero Importante Kung saan talaga nang galing Sila Rando at Oda So they were fighting the evil ones From their From their side of Japan So It's understandable Malinis pa rin Ang plot Okay. So, pace, flow, and plot They all work together for this episode Giving us another good one Giving us another good one So, 
Besides Dramedy the Animation Episode 7? Hmm. Yeah, yun ang naman ang complaint ko eh. Two thumbs up. Nagtataka kayo ngayon mga ka-lifestyle kung bakit sinabi kong kanina na yun lang ang complaint ko. Well, the only complaint I have here is that meeting, that last meetup scene. Parang, it took too long eh. <laughs> that meetup scene took longer than usual. Okay? If you would um, see that as a hindrance to the pacing of the episode, uh, you have a point. Pero, take it out of context. Ang daming theories na pinresent ni Jessica regarding uh, the church and and their connection to the evil ones na sinasabi nila Rando at Oda. Ito pa lang, ano eh, um, deep dive na ni Jessica ang connection na yun. So, pero, a complaint is a complaint. Medyo, medyo matagal yung meetup scene na yun. Medyo matagal. Sana hindi sila nag, uh, nag, nagtagal doon. Kung baga, they could have just presented um, Jessica's side of the story. Yung mga theories niya. Sana yun na. Kasi, I feel this was the most important part of that scene. Yung, yung pagkaka-theorize ni, pagkaka-present ni Jessica ng kanyang mga teorya regarding their enemy. But anyway, it's, uh, it's, still, a, it's still a really good episode. Kasi, uh, it is a superhero anime. They really need to um, focus on on uh, the exploits of the knocker ups. Kumbaga, on how they um, how they deal with the Desaria, the the weirds. Pero right now, they got a really bad record against the uh, against whoever is running uh, this show, whether it be the Church or the Evil Ones. Right now, uh, that win wherein they they were able to save this dreamer, uh, yung sa una. Uh, a win is a win. They should, they should celebrate that. But what does Ryuhei do? So subatan pa niya si si Lando. But 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 kaya na ako na. Kaya nato na kami. Wala na dapat ganon. You're up against a powerful and influential enemy. The time for the time for bickering isn't now. Para para wala naman kayong knocker up eh. Kung sino mao na sa pagpatay ng weird or desarya, good. At least the job is done. Pero, it might have cost them for the second dreamer. In case you didn't notice, mga ka-lifestyle. Kaya, uh, hindi nila naisalba yung pangalawang dreamer dito sa episode. E mukhang talagang nagsasapawan na sila Ryuhei at Rando rito. Ryuhei chose to, um, well, I think it was his intention to, to save this dreamer pa. But, Rando simply ended it. Kasi, ayun nga eh, the moment the dreamer offers up his or her wish, it's over for the knocker-ups. Kung baga, clean up na lang yung gagawin nila ngayon. They need to take out this weird before it um, does a lot of damage in the real world. Well, I hope in the next episode, this doesn't happen again. Yung, yung uh, sapawan nila, nila Rando at Ryuhei. So again, B-Side Tromery the Animation, Episode 7. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, Mama Lifestyle. Like Tokyo Revengers, Night Dead 2041, Sunny Boy. This anime doesn't teaser the next episode. Yeah. You know the drill, Mama Lifestyle, when it comes to this. We will have to wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. The road to the finale of this anime has just started, folks. The Blood Halloween rages on. So, Mikey uh, gets out of his own predicament, but bigla na siya lumuhod. Well, technically unconscious kasi hindi na gumagalaw eh. Yung isang captain ng Valhalla, ayun, susugurin si Mikey, who steps in? Kisaki, with his third division naman. So, naglabo-labo na. Takinichi, 
to get upon himself to stop Kisaki from getting to Mikey. Alam niya kasi kung ano mangyayari. So, just went. He just um, struggled himself through that, that line of Valhalla. So, but who steps in this time? Baji. So, sinalubungan niya ng tubo si Kisaki. Natatan siya ni Takimichi. Sabi ni Takimichi, don't do this anymore, Baji. And what? Sinapak lang siya ni Baji. Sinapak din ni Baji si Matsuno. Kasi kas- uh, kasunod lang sila eh. But, all of a sudden, Kasutora stabs Baji. Then after that, sabi niya kay Takimichi, ikinukumusta siya kasi. It's just a scratch. He now decides what? to kill Kisaki. Tali pa ng buhok, kumupar siya ng tubo. It is now a 50 on 1 fight for Baji. So he he needs to go through the entire third division of Toman para lang uh, para lang makarating kay Kisaki. And he did that. Ang na siya. Sila dalawa lang ni Kisaki ang, nakata- ang nakatayo. Final scene. Ayun na. Uh, bigla na lang bumul- bigla na lang umubo ng dugo si Baji. So yung pagkasaksak sa kanya ni ni Kasutora that did it. So but before um he was actually toto to with Kisaki, Kisaki was calling Kasutora confirmed. Siya ang talagang commander ng Valhalla. Why is he trying to make a call to Kisaki in the middle of this fight? What's what's the deal? So we can now safely assume that Kisaki is both the commander of Valhalla and its mole. Takimichi knows this pretty well na. Kaya niya pinipigilan si si Baji. Kaya niya pinipreserve yung ang buhay nito eh. So, wow! What a way to start the road to the finale. <laughs> so let's start breaking it down. Pace! Natural! It's still the blood Halloween, folks. Kaya tense ang ang pacing. You don't know when and where the twists will come. Hindi mo lang ako sa manggagaling eh. I got nothing to say about the pacing of this episode. Superb! Slow for a few seconds pero emphasize yung plot twist. Wala eh. I, I got... I'm totally at a loss for words when it comes to the pacing. Talagang... One word for it. Superb. Wow. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here is um Takimichi taking it upon himself to to protect Mikey. Kahit pasugod na yung isang division of Valhalla sa kanya. Eh, walang, everybody is busy with their own fight. Siyempre si Draken, inasikaso si Hanma, eh, and the other captain, siyempre, um... They got, they got their own brawls as well. So, siya lang talaga. So, good siya. We all see here how Takinichi is determined to change the future. Despite his absolutely underdog status, despite his weakness, despite his wimpy behavior, he is in the middle of the blood Halloween trying to um, stave off potential murders here either by Baji or by... either uh, yung kamatay ni Baji o kamatay ni Mikey or even kamatay ni Kasato ni Kasotora he's trying to um, rewrite the future he was he he came from isinasa tabi niya muna ang pagiging uh, ang pagiging wimp niya para na ma, pa, para na ma, makumpleto yung kanyang mission so this is how this is how serious he is now in accomplishing his mission. Emo, ta- talagang, ta- at saka, mahalata mo na nahihirapan siya in this gear shift. Second and final gear shift came when Kasutora stabs Baji. Through this, we now see that the Blood Halloween is slowly progressing as as Kisaki wanted. At least from his point of view. Pinatay ni Kasutora si Baji. This now gives reason to, for Mikey to kill Kasutora. 
Hindi tapos. Matatalo ang Toman, i-absorb ng Valhalla. And now, Kisaki can be the acting commander. At marami nakapansin na taga Toman. Si, si Smiley, ako si Matsuno, si, oh, at saka yung isa pang ano, yung isa pa ng captain, I forgot eh. Pero talagang napapaniwala na niya si Jaken at si Mitsuya. Kung sino pa yung mga founder ng... <laughs> Sino mga co-founder ng Toman? Yung pananiniwala ngayon kay Kisaki, Kisaki at that point. If Takemichi doesn't say Baji here, wala. All for not ang mga ang, 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 mission, ang mission niya rito. If Baji doesn't get out of this alive, the future will not be changed. Yun ang yun ang uh, yun ang nakikita ko rito. Baji needs to live. So, yung pagkakasaksak sa kanya, that became a factor in the final scene. Akala lang niya kasi, wala lang to. Eh, yung pala, wala. He was about to kill Kisaki right there. Eh, yung tubo palang kinuha niya, may, ano, may, may tulis. May tulis sa dulo. So, isang, isang saksak man niya sa leeg ni Kisaki yun. He was right there. Then, pok! He suddenly went on his knees, coughing out blood. Siguro, yun ang trabaho ni Kasutora talaga. Patayin si Baji. And, tinanong mga ni Matsuno kung bakit ginawa ni Kasutora yun. Sabi lang ni Kasutora, Baji needs to die. Basically. We can safely assume that he is now acting upon Kisaki's orders. And, nahalata doon sa final scene na he's... Uh, he's, call, he's calling Kasutora from his phone. Bo, bakit kami number ni Kasutora? Ha? <laughs> bakit kami number niya? We can now accuse Kisaki of being the hidden commander of Valhalla. Siya na ang nagpamol sa sarili niya. Siya na mismo nag-infiltrate sa Toman para para imani obra niya ang Blood Halloween. That's what this gear shift is telling me. These two gear shifts definitely will play a role in the final four episodes of this anime. Kung ano kung magiging success ba o failure ang mission ni Takinichi rito. Plotwise, definitely malinis. Mainly because carry over siya from the previous episode. Kasi hindi pa tapos ang Blood Halloween eh. Nagbabadayan ba dalawang gang eh. Natural. Kung ano ang linis ng plot ng ng pinagkuha ng episode, sigurado, I am 90% sure, ganun pa rin kalinis ang plot na yun. And, lo and behold, episode 20, malinis pa rin ang plot. The events leading to uh, Valhalla's absorption of Toman, mukhang magkakatotoo na. And this is what Takemichi doesn't want to happen. You get me, mga kalaysa? You feel me? Kung hindi natin i-deep dive ang episode na to, hindi natin makikita yung mga potential complications rising from the Blood Halloween. Lalahan niyo. Kasutora stabs Baji. At pag nakita ni Mikey ito, papatayin niya si Kasutora. Nato, definitely. Kasi ganun nga nang, ganun nga ikiniwento ni, Dra- ni 2017 Draken a few episodes ago kay Takimichi. If... Baji is successful in killing Kisaki, then all, then we're all good. Because, there's no more Kisaki to pull the strings. So, that pwede mangyari. This plot will make you deep dive into this episode. So, pace, flow, and plot, I almost did not distinguish one from the other. Nahirapan nga ako sa pag-determine ng gear shifts dito eh. Sa so, dami lang nangyari sa episode na to. Halatang halata mo bilang viewer na the road to the finale has has begun. Wow! <laughs> Grabe ang episode na to. Talagang iba talaga Blood Halloween. <laughs> so, Tokyo Revengers episode 20? Ako nag-isip. Ang ganda ng episode. Oh! <laughs> Two thumbs up! 
This will probably be the shortest Tokyo Revengers review I, w I would ever do. Because <laughs> we've done this before for this anime. Episodes. Uh, basta yung the episodes concerning the Battle of August 3rd. Yan. Ganon, ganon halos ito. Kasi nag, ano eh, uh, nagmiss two lang two part, two part, two part episode yung Battle of August 3rd. So, carry over on plots nun. Pareho malinis. Ganito rin to. Episodes 19 and 20. Kasi Blood Halloween na. Kasagsagan ng Blood Halloween. Wow! It carried over what episode 19 uh, did. But I am still confident that episode 19 is the anim is this anime's best episode. Kasi dito talaga nag ano eh. Talaga yung bakbakan dito talaga. Wow. Off the charts. Off the charts of bakbakan ng episode 19. Lalo na tong binubugbog na ni Kasotora si Mikey. All right, that capped it off. <laughs> and of course, um all of a sudden Mikey going going invincible Mikey on Kasotoro and his ano, yung lakis niya. Here, we saw a dark turn in in this anime. Ayun nga, sinaksak ni Kasotoro si Baji. E samantalang para ko silang balhala. So, it really makes you wonder. It really makes you wonder. So, who? Ano to? That phone call, Kisaki is actually making to Kasotoro sa kalagitnaan ng bakbakang ito. It confirms whatever suspicions you will have against uh, Kisaki. Ako, may suspicion ako na talagang ito ang ito ang talagang komando ng Balhale. Frontliner lang niya si Han Marito. Si Kisaki talaga ang nagpapatakbo sa Balhala. And he was more than willing to 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 pose as a um, uh, to pose as a uh, to call this a Toman captain candidate para lang ma-infiltrate ito because he already has expressed interest in absorbing absorbing the Tokyo Manji Gang for Valhalla siguro matagal na niyang balak ito and this confirms yung isang dating Mobius na kinausap nila Takimichi at Matsuno I forgot his name already this confirms what he said was true about Kisaki that Kisaki is bad news. Demonyo ang taong to. Surprise! Kisaki is the one pulling the strings. He's the one. He's the one actually running this show called the Blood the Blood Halloween. At ayon yun, the moment where Baji hits Kisaki in the face with that pipe, talagang hinatawa niya ng tuboy mo ani Kisaki. Oh, that was a satisfying moment. <laughs> that was a satisfying moment. Yung tipong talagang talagang basag yung salamin basag yung eyeglass niya that was a satisfying moment <laughs> we're going to expect more of that more action more twists more gang politics in the last four episodes of this anime's run ako expecting ko yan I don't know about you guys so again Tokyo Revengers episode 20 two thumbs up Hindi ko na patatagalin ng review na to. In typical Revengers fashion, no teasers! So, we'll just have to do the drill, mga ka lifestyle. We wait for next week and watch episode 21. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Wow. Rarely do we see a Yu-Gi-Oh! episode start an episode with a duel. <laughs> this is one, it's a, it's a rarity these days when it comes to the franchise. But this episode, so we're going to run it down as quickly as we can. Kasi talagang fast-paced ang episode. Yuka versus Roa. First turn, well, Yuka sets up a really nice field. Then came... Roa's turn. By the time Roa ended his turn, Yuka's left with an empty field. So it's Yuka's turn now. 
she's found the way to well, to um to save a lot of life points from Roa. Then in a huge turn of events, Roa summons um three teen type normal monsters also also named Royal Demons and manages to win with it. <laughs> right? With just that, he manages to win. Wow. Iba talaga yung iba talaga ang ano eh. Iba talaga ang galing ni Roa Kirishima. With Roa's win, the score is now tied between Goa 7 and the Goa siblings. So, 3 all na. But, uh, well, it's still a long way to go. The lead characters of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s need to beat the Goa siblings 6 times. So, they need 3 more wins, basically. Final scene. After everyone has gone home, Luke, uh, Luke, uh, couldn't find this um couldn't find this thing that he's uh, that he's hiding from his sister pero wala na doon now all of a sudden he sees this ball of light calling to him sinundan niya napunta sa uli sa gubat and he finally discover he finally um he finally sees this uh this ball of light up close and personal what exactly did he see we all don't know. <laughs> Let's break this episode down. ARD style. Pace. Look. I got nothing to say when it comes to the pace. Kasi, the entire duel took up the entire episode. So, it was a real treat for Yu-Gi-Oh! fans like me to see another episode that wherein a duel started right off the bat. Kumaga, Umpisa pala ng episode, nagsimula na ang duelong ito. It's a rarity these days when it comes to this franchise. So, kung mga, they really want to um, establish a good story first. But this one, looks like they threw that out the window. And just went down to good old-fashioned dueling. I got nothing to say when it comes to the pacing. It was really superb. And, talagang... Uh, it was a long overdue kind of pacing. Ever since uh, probably Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5, it's been a really long time that uh, long time Yu-Gi-Oh! fans have seen an episode such as this. Yung talagang kumbaga, first third of the episode eh, and nagsimula na yung duel. You don't see that every day in this franchise. Flow naman! Well, first gear ship was when Yuka issued the challenge. So, pero ang tumanggap si Roa. Here's why. Because his mindset is is this. If any member of Roa Roman has a well, has a debt to either pay or collect, he cannot take it sitting down. Bilang well, but he is the um, he is the leader of this band. So, kumaga, whatever this band, whatever each member of this band does, he, he can he can hold himself accountable for. You can say character development time for Roa. That's why I called it the gear shift because during season one you wouldn't see this kind of um. Uh, leader move from Roa. We all know he's a self-centered dickhead during season one. All, right? all he cared about was himself. Kait si Romin nabibwisit sa kanya no araw. But with this move of his, I well, he has probably gained a little bit of Ro Romin's respect back, at least his cousin's respect back. So we can say that this gear shift is a character development gear shift for Roa. And how much he's uh yeah, how much is going as a person, both as a person and as yeah, and as a duelist. Kumaga, uh you've seen if you've seen the episode and he suddenly summons those three talagang weak normal monsters. I uh, so go What's the deal, Roa? What can I do as a kind of monster? So we all know Roa is a um is a power is uh is a power player. Much like 
Ah, uh, much like Jack Atlas in the 5D's era, much like um Shark in the Zexal era, much like of course, yeah, the Jack Atlas of both 5D's and Arc 5. Mga power player lahat to. So, they the only thing they care about during a duel is how to is how to up the attack of their monsters. Roa did exactly that in this duel, especially nung down siya sa life points. He summons these three uh, royal, uh, royal, royal demons pa rin, na normal, pero normal monsters na super hina attack. And he found a way for them to, to help him win this duel. Not only did he up their attack, he also downed, he also downgraded his opponent's monsters attack. Lalo na yung Yung ace ni Yuka, yung kamukha ni Utopia, he was able to to bring its attack down. But you can say that he's he's now a duelist that doesn't leave anything to chance, and he will use this archetype to the fullest. Yup, confirmed. <laughs> Second gear shift was when um was when Yuka gained the upper hand in the duel. Dahil, she was able to up the attack of her own monsters and meron siyang, uh, meron siyang ginamit na effect na that somehow limited Roa's battle phase. Kasi bigla siya, nag bigla siya nag activate ng trap wherein any fire monster on her field cannot be attacked. Eh, puro fire yun eh! So, what does what does Roa have to do now? Um, activate an effect that changes attributes. Activate an effect that will um, mm, like what he did in this duel. Downgrade the attack of all those three monsters. Why did I call it the gear shift? Because you can see here how. Um, how how persistent a duelist Yuka is. She just showed us all again why she's a president why she's a president sibling. How many fan service moments did uh, did she serve in that gear ship? I saw the water returning alive there, and of course um, her utopia like ace. Pero it has baseball bats for wings. <laughs> si home. Okay. Kumaga ginawang ginawang baseball player si Utopia rito. So, those are two fan service moments. That's why I called it a gear shift. It served two fan service moments. Back to back. Final gear shift came during the final scene. So, talagang, it really got me curious as to what this ball of light is and why is it calling to look? Bakit sino pa tinadawang ito? Making me remember right now of that moment when... When Jude received super polymerization, at that moment, uh, the scene that sparked that mini arc was when Jude was, you know, was sort, in a sort of a trance here. Tapos dunya na receive yung card na super polymerization. It's a really powerful fusion card. We're in. You can take one of your opponent's monsters as fusion material, as long as it's as long as it is the correct one. Sakit nun. <laughs> For example, you got a um, you got a really powerful monster on your field, then all of a sudden you get hit with this card. You're about to attack, and your opponent your opponent is on the defensive, and he activates this one. Patay! All of a sudden your monster is gone, and a new fusion monster is on the opponent's field. <laughs> we can only speculate as to what this what this blue light is all about. Kung bakit uh, bakit si Luke ang tinatawag nito? Or, why is he talking for that matter? <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. We'll just let the next episode explain all of that. Kaya, yeah, these three gear shifts that I saw, at least in the next episode, it will play a, it will play a big role. Especially, uh, especially the last one. Plot-wise, malinis. Because, Anong backstory ang pwede mong isingit sa ganitong episode? Anaus! Eh di, eh di nagwala lahat ng Yu-Gi-Oh! fans pag pinutol mo yung duel right there. 
You get what I'm saying, mga ka-lifestyle? Ako ba? Ako, personally, magwawala ako eh. <laughs> Don't fucking divert my attention when I'm watching a duel! Kaya, the plot is squeaky clean. Because we only have the duel to worry about. Okay? And it was, a, and it was an, an awesome duel to watch. So, nakaganti na ang mga Kirishima Yuka? You can say that because Roa pulled the rug from under Yuka. Kaya, scores all tied now. Three all. Another great episode from this anime. Um, I never thought that, um... I never thought that we would have another episode such as this. Yung, kumbaga, um, right off the starting gate, nagkaroon na ng duelo. That's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm slowly getting to, uh, getting to really love this anime. This, uh, this, this particular Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Bukod pa sa fan service, um, it, it, it's slowly getting back to the roots of this franchise. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 61! Me shit pa. Ganda nga ng duelo eh. Oh, <laughs> two thumbs up! I'm now looking forward to what's going to happen to look after the final scene of this episode. So, we can expect um, something big in the next episode. Kasi mukhang, mukhang may mangyayari kay Luke dito. Uh, I can really feel it in my bones. Kasi usually, ganun ang nangyayari. It, it happened to Jude. It happened to Yugi. It also happened to Yuya. And we're hoping that Sevens could deliver that same caliber of an episode dito sa, sa susunod. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens episode 61. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Next episode has been teasered. Ito na yung ko. Pero, I don't trust it. Kasi, quickies eh. Parang, halatang, halatang pinagtagpi-tagpi na para, para lang may mailabas na, na teaser. Hindi naman kailangan ng delicate storyline dyan eh. O, pagtagpi-tagpi nyo yung mga scene, o, ilabas yun as teaser. Bala ng audience kung maniniwala sila o hindi. So, you know the deal, mga ka-lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Vena and her crew <laughs> have, uh, well, have decided to make a supply run in this island called Barbaral. Uh, a known haven for pirates. Most of them are stocks nila. And Vena and the twins ran off somewhere to... Well, of course, twins are now obliged to protect Vena because she ran off on her own to investigate yung... yung stone na... na binigay sa kanya ng high priest. They found out that they were... that this came from Germany while they were making their way back to the sub. Alam pa na ng sub money na dinisign ni Karin ay the Bonito 2. So, well, Fena has, no, Fena has no objections about that. But anyway, back to this, back to Barbaral. They were met up with uh, this, well, supposedly sleaze ball fiancé of Fena with some female pirates. Oh, bakbaka nalaga. Then when the when the rest of the crew came back without them, don na uh, suspect sa Yuki Maru. Tapos agad to their aid. He downs half of the attacking force na yung sumalubong kay Lafena in one go. <laughs> this is the usual way. But ito mga female pirates ito, medyo formidable. Uh, aside from, well, the twins already disposed of the males. Tinakbo na ni Yuki Maru si Fena. Ito mga female pirates ito, meron pala silang kasama na sniper na ano siya na nataplisan siya sa, sa, sa kanang braso niya but he was able he was still able to to get away with Fena and well 
they were able to they were able to get off the island but not without uh punishment being given to Fena and the twins tira <laughs> sila sa dagat silang tatlo final scene uh, this uh, English military officer uh, named Abel named Abel pala, Abel uh, knows something about Fena but I guess he's still distracted right now with O'Malley yung babaeng pirate don't tell me guys this is Grace O'Malley the pirate queen I'll explain later so let's break it down ARD style pace well I guess the pace is telling us that um, the road Fena is taking right now is not an easy one kasi uh, na feel ko yung tension even though they were just doing a supply run and well nagkaroon nga ng gulong ganito the pace was understandable kasi we all know historically that I don't know about you but I know historically na ang mundo ng mga pirata walang ano eh uh, walang tawag dito walang halong katahimikan there is no peace in the world of pirates so uh, I guess the pacing on this episode is uh, well, uh, is making us understand that kaya the situation will always be tense when it comes to uh, when it comes to pirates flow naman well first gear shift here was uh, was uh, was when Fena got attracted to this you can call it um, jewelry store kasi may mga fancy furniture meron din mga ano meron din silang mga binibendang precious stones so I think that compelled Fena to start investigating about that stone na pinabibigay sa kanya ng ng father niya based on her investigation ayun na uh, nagsalita yung store owner na that stone came from Germany it was crafted in Germany to be uh, to be specific so kinomplement naman niya yung kambal and well <laughs> both twins were elated kasi uh, kinomplement siya na ng siguro pinakamagandang babae sa balat ng lupa right you know Fena's beauty can sometimes be a liability because this initial offer made by the store owner yep it is rather lewd bibigyan niya yung, bibigyan niya si Fena ng information regarding that stone kung kakama siya ng isang gabi eh di nagalit yung kambal hmm sige well we have a better deal for you I got this a gear shift because Fena is now taking the initiative of uh, well, of retracing her past what does uh, what does this stone mean bakit uh, ipinabibigay sa kanya ng ng tatay niya and is pirating her uh, the kind of life she wants yan yan ang mga tanong dyan eh so this gear shift will the way I see it will raise questions in Fena second gear shift is yun uh, natatan siya ng fiance niya na na basura along with these female pirates now simply lang kung bakit ko tinawag na gear shift to we now see that um, despite being uh, or being happy go lucky people the twins yup they still know their uh, their job to protect Fena to protect their captain todo tanggol sila then until such time Yukimaro joins in ayun na <laughs> talagang wow um Yukimaro was again shown us here that how much of uh let's call this how much of a swordsman he is talagang may laki lang pa mga ano eh mga pirates at tigaron yun ang unang pinanata ni Yukimaro wala patay lahat <laughs> final gear shift 
was when well during the final scene although mm, medyo 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 lewd on the thing pero he was okay, Abel was holding this parang locket na puso and he was asking himself Fena do you really know who you are and he's going to make out with Grace O'Malley the pirate queen pero O'Malley lang ang ang introduction sa kanya ng episode na to but historically if you're uh, if you're into the if you're into the history of pirates you know the name O'Malley her full name is Grace O'Malley and she is known as the pirate queen these three gear shifts will play a role in this anime's run kasi nakita kasi makikita nyo through these gear shifts on how um, on how treacherous the road Fena is on right now but thanks to her um, to her crew she made it out safe this time and these three gearships are also telling me that Fena's crew has done this before yung pirate kasi kilala sila ng ano eh ng, ng isang ng isang female pirate she calls them the goblin knights I truly believe now that uh, that Yukimaro and the rest of Fana's crew have done this before. They've done pirating before. So plot-wise, Maninis. Although the pacing was uh, the pacing was somewhat fast from the get-go, without any battle scenes, Maninis pa rin ang plot because it. Try to down that continuity of uh, of Fena and her crew doing a supply run, pero nag pero homi walay si si Fena kasama yung kambal to uh, to make some retracing of her past. So yun nga inbisikan niya yung yung origin ng stone na yon. Malinis pa rin ang plot. So pace, flow, and plot. We all came together for this episode. For an episode three, it's a great one. Kasi magandang pagkakamelb, magandang pagkakakolab ng pacing, ng flow, at ng plot. So it, it, overall, it's a great episode by this, from this anime. So, Fena Pirate Princess. Episode 3 kasi nang, nung nakilala sila ng, ano, ng isang female pirate and she calls them the goblin knights for me they got a lot of explaining to do when it comes to that and so eventually they will tell Fana and I don't think tangkap pa ni Fana ang pakiging pirate niya kasi uh, although she now she now wears that pirate get up parang hindi pa rin niya tanggap eh uh, well, she's now living this kind of life while uh, while retracing her past. Hey, but hey, if you're a pirate and you got a submarine for a ship, but we can do anything. Hey, we can do anything with the submarine, even down other pirate ships. Hello, hello. Tapos siguro sa sabi naman ibang pinata. O sige, take our, sige, take our, uh, take our loot. Anong loot, loot? Tangin na nyo. <laughs> Papatay namin kayo rito. <laughs> Para wala kami kakumpetensya. Hindi ako ba't gano'n na mentality rito eh. You know, in the world of pirates, 
not during the pirates during um during those times during the time of the renaissance up to uh, probably probably to the mid 1800s no pirates showed no mercy to uh, to the ships they to the ships they board wala suerte mo kung bubuhayin ka nila if you're if you're uh, if you're on a galleon if you're uh, uh, a galleon screw suerte mo kung tinira ka boy overall this is a really great episode you yeah. we now see how uh, how overprotective venus crew is especially si Yukimaru wow see him nakita niya na in this scene na hindi kasama ng mga ibang crew sila sila Fenat yung kambal tapos siya agad sa loob sa loob ng uh, sa loob ng bayan so wow ikaw ni ni Tsubaki yung isa nilang kasama you're worrying too much but you can't help it that's Yukimaru for you So again, Fana Pirate Princess Episode 3. Like it's uh core roster members Tokyo Avengers Night at 2041 and Sunny Boy. Yep. This anime is has no plans of teaser in the next episode you can only see the post grant the uh the english post grant it's you now not even the title so well we'll just have to do the film on our lifestyle we will wait for next week and watch that episode in the meantime enjoy the other reviews in this digest so yeah The rampaging Andromeda acceleration continues well, and so are the getters. So kung magat talagang they're under orders na from the dinosaur empire, and guess what? The dinosaur empire have their own version of getter, the getter Soros, being piloted by um, by Kamui's three former uh, playmates, mga makababata niya, si Ganryu, Vice at si Gosro. So these are the guys that uh, that met up with him during the final scene of episode 7. So yeah, they're they're reliable, okay? Basta kay Bigani Kamui. You can't erase the uh, the professional rivalry between uh, between Ark at saka ang Gator Soros. Eh medyo tanito during one of their battles medyo nagtang uh, nito medyo nawala sa focus si Kamui pero ang sinisisi ni Vice si si Takuma eh hindi naman si Takuma pilot ng Getter Khan eh. si Baku kasi they were in because uh, they were in Khan mode nung nung napit down sila ng isang ano ng isang ng isang robot ng Andromeda Acceleration so sumabas sa kanila ang Getter Soros and well of course uh, Flame exp- and we all know how dirty Takuma's mouth is <laughs> talagang uh, hindi nagkukuna sa profanity ang Getter Robo Arc when it comes to uh, when it comes to this uh, Takuma always provides that at ang pumigil pa sa away na to si Kamui so pero Uh, what you call this something's bothering Takuma may, nakaki- may nakita siya kasi tatlong uh, tatlong babaeng tao and he figured one of them naki- medyo na mukha niya one of them is Kamui's mother so sinabi niya kay Professor Han ito and yun nag-usap sila in Professor Han's quarters at yun uh, Han told uh, told Bako and Takuma all na ganito yan they've been humans have been experimented on by the dinosaur empire since uh, Gorda II Gorda II's reign uh, pinapapatay pala sa kanya ni Gorda II yung mga 
human subjects pero hindi niya magawa including kamoy e kaya pala pinapapatay ni, ni Gordo II ito anak pala niya si kamoy our assumption that kamoy is a prince of the dinosaur empire if checked out already so kumaga lumalabas palang magkapatid si Gordo III at si kamoy pero uh, mas bilib ang mga tao kay Kamuy. Pabala siya beacon of hope ng dinosaur empire. Sabi nga ni sabi nga ni Han Kamuy is an even is an even bigger name than Gord III. Dinosaur empire prepared a send off ceremony for both for both Ark and the Gerasaurus pilots. During the ceremony Takuma pulled a fast one Okay, all praises sa kay Emperor Gordo III, all hail the dinosaur empire. Yung pala, isasama niya yung tatlong babaeng tao sa kanila. He found a way to, uh, to, to truly reunite Kamui with his mom. So, yun, much to the dismay of Emperor Gore. At yun, siyempre, napa, napailing na lang gano'n si Professor Han. But, Just goes, to, just goes to show you how uh, kung hanggang hanggang saan ang gulang ni Takuma uh, while this was going on the Andromedas generation was able to uh, was able to find where the dinosaur empire is ayun sino good sila and final scene nagpakilala na yung pinaka second in command ng Andromedas generation si Kong Ming sabi niya, uh, something to this effect. It's about time I end you loads of getters. Tara ka ng hamon na ng away. We're gonna run this episode down ARD style. Starting now. Pace. Um, I don't know if you can call the pacing fast. Except for, of course, the time. That scene where the Andromeda Acceleration has... Kung baga natuntunan na nila kung nasa ng Dinosaur Empire. First third of the episode. Okay. Then uh, the middle, the middle two thirds. It's all um, feeling out, and especially Black Gather uh, comes to arrest. So Kinosap right there, and then Kinosap ni Sho si Go, and uh, sabi naman ni Go, Gather is hope. Then Pak he takes off again. You can't call that a tense moment kasi this confirms show suspicion na si Go ang pilot ng Black Gather. So yun nga. But no trace of either Ryoma or Tahir. Hmm. This episode is properly paced. Kahit Uh, it's showing us na talagang magulo mundong ito because of the Andromeda acceleration. It's still, uh, it's still balanced out the pacing. Kaya, tamang tama lang. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was when the Ganarsoros team was introduced to the Ark team. Bakit ko natawag na gear shift to? Kasi, uh, we finally get to confirm who these three are na kumausap kay Kamui nung final scene ng episode 7. They aren't so bad. Okay. Although, uh, they see the Gatters as inferior and Takuma sees them as inferiors. Kung maga, may professional rivalry dito. Eh, hindi mo rin may iwasan yun eh. Talaga magkakaroon ng, uh, magkakaroon ng iringan eh. What else does this gear shift tell us? This gear shift also tells me that The Dinosaur Empire has their own version of Getter. <laughs> well, all in good. I consider this gear shift a fan service moment. Kasi, ang Dinosaur Empire may sariling version ng Getter. Okay. Tatlong pilots din sila. Um, I think it's going to be fun from now on on how Getter Soros is going to um, is going to handle the Andromeda Acceleration. Uh, interchangeable parts din ba to? Katulad ng katulad ni Ark? We don't know yet. So, every, so that one's up in the air. 
second gear shift is when well Shaw um, calls out go from black getter I call this a gear shift because there's because it raised one question where's Ryoma and Tahir diba dapat tatlo kayo bakit si go lang ang dumabas deep dive even if you're a first time Ghetto Robo fan you may tend to ask this question yourself if this is the former uh, Shin Getter dapat tatlo kayo bakit si Go lang ang lumabas hmm we really really get you to thinking that's why I called it a gear shift final gear shift is when whoa the dinosaur empire is now is now under siege by the Andromeda generation kumaka derecho dinerecho na sila ng Andromeda generation these insects were finally able to find their find their base ayun na the Andromeda generation starts swinging directly at the dinosaur empire so all hands on deck so tapo na rin ang ang arc team sa sa getter nila then Main stops them right there for the first time probably we're in a time of crisis right now kasi hindi makarating sa kanilang getter ang, ang tatlong arc pilots remember guys this is yeah we're in the second half of this anime's run and business has already picked up that's what this gearship is telling us okay so these three gear shifts that I saw, they will play a role in the upcoming Road to the Finale. Tandaan nyo, episode 8 na. So, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The Road to the Finale starts at episode 9. So, next week na yan. Mukha magkakasubukan na ang, ang Andromeda's Deleration at ang Getter Coalition. Can't wait to see the, uh, the outcome of this one. Plot-wise, um, plagiado. Bakit? Kasi may mga may mga flashback scenes nito na although unimportant, pero it, yeah, you need to watch it anyway. The plot was well ironed out, including uh, especially yung scene where in uh, Professor Hunt tells uh, tells all regarding. Kamui's uh, origins the plot was well ironed out probably just for that uh, for that scene so pace flow and plot they all came together for this episode it's another great it's another great one from this uh, from this uh, from this franchise so get the Robo arc episode 8 One good thing about um, not following the Monster of the Week format during uh, the format that was used during the 70s, it's go also good for Gather. I say, I think they haven't been they haven't been following the Monster of the Week format since since Gather Robo Go, yung alternate storyline. Ever since that time, hindi na nila sinunod yung Monster of the Week format, MLTW for short. So since gather since Shin gather robo yeah. Uh, kasi you really, if you're an OG mega franchise like gather robo, you really need to change with the times. Okay. And this this franchise has been doing that since Shin gather robo, and yeah, worked out really well, even here in Arc. Like, um, Pakita pa rin ng, ng series na to, that the Andromeda generation they are hell bent on destroying the Gather race and destroying Earth in the process. They probably don't give a shit about our planet. So, kaya 
this collision between the humans and uh, and the Saurians, yeah, it is absolutely necessary because they both live on the same planet. Yeah, kapanapanabik ang magiging road to the finale. I could really feel it in my bones. So again, get the Robo Arc episode eight. of the next episode has been teasered. Hmm. Nakaka-intriga ang title. Pero based on the final scene of this episode, mukhang magkakaganan nga. <laughs> But, uh, I don't wanna trust it. Yet. So, we will have to wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. You know, when it comes to uh, Kimi, he has, yeah, he's got a lot to learn when it comes to suppressing emotions. What do I mean by this? Well, here's the rundown. We all know how vibrant a kid Alicia is. And I think he, uh, well, one of the since the siesta, Sabi siesta, you're a lowly god. <laughs> all this time. Uh, she's this bubbly, r- vibrant uh, detective wannabe, and she wants to solve this case herself. Yung mga heart, yung mga nandutukon uli ng puso. And all this time, Shesta is assuming that hell is responsible, kasi uh, patay na naman si Cerberus eh, yung shapeshifter. So they're now sh- he- that her and Kimi are now assuming that. Cerberus isn't the only shapeshifter among Spes because Spes is basically an organization of androids even hell can be assumed as an android kumbaga well uh, they've all seen what's what Spes can do and minsan nagkaroon ng well minsan na lang inatake si si Alicia rito buti na lang yung singsin na binigay ni Kimi sa kanya may tracking device they were able to track uh, Alicia and they found out and they found her sprawled on the floor with this police officer na parang sugatan din and uh, Kimi rushed Alicia to the hospital sinamahan pa siya doon pero Uh, namalayan na lang ni Kimi na wala na si Alicia doon so tingin siya sa tracking device so sinunta niya sinunta, sinunta din pala siya ni Siesta pinaalala na sa kanya ni Siesta that the knife found on that crime scene where Alicia and the police officer were were found was the knife at their place Alicia appears. Well, siya na mismo nagsabi na sometimes her uh, her mind goes blank and she has no recollection of all of everything that has happened to her within the past 24 hours. Parang ganun yan eh. All of a sudden, she attacks Kimi with that same knife. Ayun, pinigilan siya ni Shesta and was about to blow her brains out. Pinigilan naman ni Kimi si Siesta. It was a really tense moment. Then all of a sudden, final scene, Camillion makes his appearance. Dinuko na si Alicia. And basically gave the uh, the location of Spes' new base. Kaya siguro, if you want to get Alicia back, you'll have to come for her. Then Kimi now uh, recollect their thoughts. And they're not They're not apologetic of what they just did. Sinabi na lang ni Siesta na Buta na muna, mag-grocery muna tayo. We make some apple pie, brew some tea, and then Bawin natin si Alicia. Let's run this down ARD style. Pace. Tense na ang ang pacing 
nung bigla nawala ulit si Shasta sa ospital habang binabantayin siya ni Kimi. Why did I call the gear shift? Simple. I think this confirmed Kimi's suspicion of Alicia. Kimi wouldn't go into that much trouble putting a putting a microscopic traffic tracking device on that ring. Tapos ibibigay niya kay Alicia nang walang dahilan. Siesta following him confirms this suspicion. Final gear shift was when well, Camillion Uh, takes back takes back Alicia kasi dito pala na, dito, dito natin nalaman na kasangkapan pala ng space si Alicia she's on orders of space leading a double life that is what this gearship is telling me at least kumbaga space has been playing Siesta and Kimi all this time all these three years up to this point where they they feel Alicia into their lives just goes to show you how evil this organization is they will stop at nothing to eliminate Kimi and Shesta from the picture kasi ito talaga yung they are now treating both of them as threats serious threats so these two gear shifts that I saw definitely will play a role in the road to the finale well we, we've just entered the road to this to this enemy's finale episode 8 what a way to, to start the road to the finale I, I'm personally hoping that uh, we get to find out how siesta died so the detective is already dead episode 8 putting on this calm before the storm atmosphere for the road to the finale I couldn't ask for more talagang uh, wow okay lang kung uh, ganito kahabang backstory kasi talagang kapanapanabig because well, we are watching a detective anime so okay lang kung backstory pa rin ni uh, ni ni Kimi at ni Siesta to okay lang kasi we now get to um, to familiarize ourselves with the with the dynamic between them and um, you could say the chemistry the dysfunctional chemistry as shown in this episode they're two entirely different generations kasi well Siesta assuming that she's in her late 30s and of course Kimi still in his teens so that kumbaga isang Gen X or tsaka isang Gen Z usually they don't mix but in this anime they make a good team it'll be a shame if we uh, if we see Siesta die in the next episode but uh Who am I to tell what, uh, how the, how the, road, how the finale is going to go down? I'm not the anime. I'm not Enki. So, we'll just have to wait for the next episode on what's going to happen. Tandaan nyo mga lifestyle. We've already started the road to this anime's finale. 12 episode run lang kasi ang anime na to. So again, the detective is already dead. Episode 8. the next episode has been teasered <laughs> explain explain let's just do the drill mga lifestyle we wait for next week and watch that episode in the meantime enjoy the other reviews in this digest mga lifestyle The usual, uh, what's it called? This the usual daily lives, 
um, daily lives incidences of the week all right but anyway we also got to meet walter the duke's other sibling one thing definite that we know about him he is um he gets paranoid when he um when he hears the number two or anything uh re related to the number two like um uh, like uh what viola calls him the second born son which he actually is and yep he instantly gets he instantly goes ballistic about it all right ito pa lang si walter ay talagang talagang may balak maging head of the family whether the duke is cursed or not let's just say he is a power hungry dick for his age <laughs> i repeat a power hungry dick kaya pala hindi sila close ni Viole. Eh, eh may, may pagkaswapan pala tong mohong na to. Kaya, well, I, I, I don't blame Viola. If she's not that close to, to this brother of hers, mas close siya talaga sa pinakapangani nila. Who is, yeah, si Duke. She pays a visit to her favorite brother. Yeah, her favorite brother. And, well, she inadvertently meets Cuff, who is... Uh, who's in who's in the mansion right now uh, learning her ABCs literally ABCs at ang teacher niya si Rob and well Viola just mistook her for a burglar and hmm I don't know why Viola has this has this fetish for big boobs talagang uh, uh, talagang uh, si Viola na ano na lesbiane eh. alright <laughs> She even enjoys Cuff's own boobs. <laughs> Kasi ang primary complaint niya, well, she's revealed in this episode that her primary complaint is that their mother's boobs are are as flat as a board. <laughs> Grabe. The Duke saw all of this and she, yeah, he he really got the wrong idea. That, uh, okay, sige, di ba lang? Okay, um, Hindi mo na, hindi ko muna kayo store by bike. <laughs> but eventually, um, things were cleared up and uh, Rob being the kind butler that he is. Of course, he, he, is, the, he is the family's butler. Um, Kinuha ka agad yung isang, isang lock of hair ni Viola at been rushed off. Sabi kasi ni Rob, Lady Viola, there's a speck of dust on your on your on your otherwise beautiful hair and si Viola eh, we all know how she reacts in front of Rob ayun eh isa pala sa pangal isa pala sa mga pangalap niya na hawakan ni Rob yung buhok niya ayun nangyari so she throws a window open in that room and says my wish came true <laughs> This lessens my suspicion of her as a as a lesbian. Okay, she has the hearts for older men. <laughs> Second half of the episode showed us uh, the origin of how the Duke and Alice came to be together. No, unang dating palang ni Alice dito. The Duke was a um, was a pathetic mess, always feeling sorry for himself, uh, and. He's had his share of suicidal thoughts even that time when uh, a big snowstorm uh, was was raging he suddenly stop he suddenly goes out of the house well basically to kill himself by putting himself in the middle of this snowstorm so well uh, Alice comes to his rescue and Basically, sinabi sa kanya ni Alice na don't throw your life away like this. Whether you're cursed or not, nandito kami para sa yon. Especially me, yeah, si Alice. So, dun yun naalala na the Alice he met all those years ago as a child. Yeah, this is the same Alice. That's the time they started getting along well together. Yeah, don karon na yung feelings kay Alice. So. And while he was um, wallowing in this backstory of his, 
Chinek make siya ni Alice. <laughs> Tinalo siya ni Alice sa chess. That was actually the final scene when he snaps all of this backstory. And, yun nga, natalo na pala siya ni Alice sa chess. Although it's her first time to play it. Guess it's uh, another day in the life of the Duke and Alice. So let's run this episode down ARD style. Pace. Well, the usual um, slice of life stuff. So the pacing is um, moderate. Kasi may mga funny moments dito eh, that picks the pace up a little bit. And of course, uh, tense moments, especially that scene where where and those scenes pala where the Duke was in his absolute pathetic self. Yeah. Even the time uh, he tried to kill himself uh, by throwing himself in that snowstorm. Yeah, those were tense moments. Pero, overall, the pacing was moderate. For two-thirds of the episode, it was slice of life all the way. I couldn't complain about the pacing. Flow naman. It's the only gear shift I saw in this episode. It was that scene where Alice said that I remember the first time I got here. That's probably... Well, I call that a gear shift because it was the moment when the Duke was thrown into backstory mode. And he eventually lost that 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 uh, that game of chess against Alice. So it, 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 end, it ended really funny. But uh, I still call it the gear shift because we, for the first time in this anime, we get to see how... Um, how well, of what the Duke was before Alice came back to the mansion. Talagang, he was he he was pathetic. He was really pathetic. I think he's more pathetic than Walter at that time. Kaya well bottom line the Duke already gave up on life before Alice came back to the mansion as a maid. So, we can also say through that gear shift that, well, Alice was the best thing that has, that has ever happened to the Duke. Post-curse. I think right now the Duke cannot live without Alice. So, sparks the romance between them. <laughs> this one and only gear shift that I saw, well, we can't say that... Um, It'll play a role down the road to this finale. I say, well, episode eight is the road to the starts the road to the finale. But it has played a role all throughout this anime. That gear shift. Cause if you look at all the uh, all the times the Duke and Alice have been in, it started with this backstory. It started with this gear shift. So we now have a pretty good idea of where uh, where this relationship is going to go and this gear shift is also giving the Duke hope as to um, uh, when this curse when this curse of us will be broken so let's not give up let's not give up for the Duke plot wise planchado because of that backstory kaya naging planchado ang episode na to because we well that smooth transition between present timeline and that backstory swak talagang it, but this episode was well ironed out I couldn't say na malinis din ang, ang plot eh dahil although um, for most of the episode talagang talagang present timeline yung ano eh talagang nakafocus yung attention mo sa present timeline naging planchado ayun nung pumasok na yung nung pumasok na yung backstory ng Duke it was a great backstory don't get me wrong mga lifestyle it was one of the best backstory um, sequences I've I've ever seen talagang you would absolutely loathe the Duke right here kasi talagang may inis ka sa pagiging pathetic niya nun. May inis ka. If it weren't for Alice, you would totally hate the Duke. 
in this backstory sequence. Kaya, best thing that's ever happened to the Duke was Alice. Talagang, um, uh, his room was a total mess. Talagang, he was, he was literally destroying it. Then, in just one night, Alice spruces it all up. And wow, made it even better. Talagang, masasabi mong bedroom ito. Bedroom ng Duke ito. Talagang, inayos lahat ni Alice. Even the torn curtains. Okay, the, the broken glass. She picked that up. Wala siyang, I think wala siyang kinabit na cleaning utensils dito. Talagang, inassign siya ng Duke na linisin ang kwarto ito. Binigyan pa nga siya ng tatlong araw na palugit. She did it all in just one night. I guess this was the Duke's way of telling Alice to get out of his life at that point. Pero Alice persisted and grinded to clean this room. So laking gulat na lang ng Duke. Kinomagahan. Wow, super linis na. At bagong bago yung mga kortina. This backstory also tells you how serious Alice is about the Duke. Kung gano'n niya kamahal ang Duke. And you just gotta take your hat off to Alice. Nalagang huwarang, huwarang kasambahay siya, technically. And the plot will make you realize that. Kahit planchado lang. So, pace, flow, and plot. I almost did not tell one from the other. Pero yung flow, uh, sana dinagtagan pa nila ng konting twist sa, sa flow ng episode na to. And it would have been a really great one kasi I wrote to the finale. So, The Dog of Death and His Maid, episode 8. why I just gave it the one thumb up after seven, after its first seven episodes getting the two thumbs up from me. Kasi, like I said just a while ago, sana um, there were more pivotal scenes here. Which, uh, this episode doesn't deserve just one gear shift. It deserves, it deserves more than that. Lala chung story sequence kung medyo nilagyan nila ng plot twist yun na deserve to become a gear shift sigurado two thumbs up sa akin to pero uh, it doesn't deserve just one gear shift the flow of this episode sana nilagyan nila ng um, medyo tense moment na that would warrant me to give this episode the two thumbs up instead of just one thumb up. Pero isang gearship lang talaga nakita ko rito eh. Um, the episode absolutely went slice of life until the backstory sequence. Don't get me wrong, Maka Lifestyle. It is still a great episode. Although, if I only saw more than one gearship in this episode, sigurado two thumbs up sa akin to. So again, oh, sorry. And come on, guys. Come on, JC staff. It's, you've already started the road to the finale. Make it, you should have made it more, um, more, made it funnier. Uh, given one more plot twist, parang ganyan, to warn me to classify it as a gear shift. Sana ganun. Pero, Siguro next episode baka gano'n na. Uh, it's forgivable. Kaya one thumb up pa rin. <laughs> so again, The Talk of Death and His Maid, episode 8.
shift 2018. Title of the next episode has been teasered. Getting a good feeling that we're gonna get those road to the final feels in this episode. Dito talagang ano eh. Uh, hindi ko na feel na this is already the road to the final. That the road to the finale has started. Hopefully in this episode, itong darating. We'll get those road to the finale feels. So, let's wait for next week. And watch that episode, mga kalaysta. You know the drill. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. <laughs>